and sound check one, two, three, four. Sound check one, two, three, four. Sound check one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Check one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. I don't know, we can stand up, y'all. Kind of tight in here. Thirty seconds to radio, Justin. All right. And this time I would like to announce the finals for the Sarah Miller Stables. This time, J. Zong Jones. And good evening, everyone, or afternoon, I should say. Welcome to WZCO. We have some middle school basketball. We're down here in lovely Nakina, North Carolina, bringing you the Cerro Gordo Nakina game. And this is homecoming for Nakina, so that's why we're here. I'm on here with my good friend Justin from CCCA. Justin, how are you doing tonight? Pretty good. And uh, we've got the girls' game coming up first um, for Cerro Gordo. You can hear the, the home crowd being announced here. We have Alex Chestnut starting for Nakina. Michaela Etheridge, number 15 for Nakina. Number, number 13, Hannah Gore. Number 14, Victoria Harrelson. And number 25, Morgan Nye. And four, Sarah Gordo. And number 21, Christina Register. And number 31, Autumn Hardwick. Number 34, Alexis Suggs. Number 24, Brianna McClellan. Number 32, Anna Whaley. And for Sarah Gordon, we have Alexis Bowen, Laramie Whitehead, Ann Lee Tiffany, Brianna Ward. Daniela Bowers, Jada Jones, Faith Washington, Lindsay Strickland, Rihanna Goodman, and Michaela Evans for Sarah Gordo. So we are almost ready to go. And we really appreciate you joining us. This is our second middle school basketball game of the year. We were uh, privileged enough to see the Hallsboro Tabor City middle teams play earlier in the year and excited to see these guys play. And we know middle school basketball is always a lot of fun, isn't it, Justin? Yes, it is. 
So we're almost ready to start. Teams are huddling up, getting ready to come out onto the court. And if you're listening to us on the radio and you're at home, go to WZCO.org and you can watch us live video stream thank you courtesy to Columbus Career and College Academy. So teams are out on the court for Sarah Gordo. That's going to be number 21, Rihanna Goodman. She's going to tip near the center of the court. Got a great crowd here tonight. Of course, once again, it's homecoming. And we are almost ready to start. And here comes the Nakina team breaking their huddle. Number 31, Autumn Hardwick is going to, to face off. And here is opening tip. Fisher comes into the center. We're ready for some basketball. Middle school girls, Nakina and Sarah Gordo. Opening tip, it's up. And it is controlled by Sarah Gordo. Check that, that's Nakina. And there's a quick shot there by Anna Whaley. Shot is no good. Rebounded by Nakina and looks like we're gonna have a turnover. Waiting for a call here. It's out and on Sarah Gordo. Out on Sarah Gordo, so Nakina retains possession on their side of the ball. Ball goes in, there's number 11. Gets the loose ball and she looks like we're gonna have a turnover. Turnover on the kind of, so Sarah Gordo takes over. Bringing the ball up the court is Laramie Whitehead. She swings it over to Lindsey Strickland. Back on the right wing to Alexis Bowen. She picks up her dribble and she's gonna get it back over to Laramie Whitehead. Dribbles near the top of the key. Whitehead gets it over to Bowen. And ball is loose, stolen by Nakina. That's number 24. Brianna McCollum, it looks like the ball goes out of bounds. And Nakina is going to retain possession on their end of the court. So here's the inbounds for Nakina. And that's number 32, Anna Whaley. She takes a shot near the free throw line. Shot is no good. It is rebounded by Christina Register. It looks like we have a jump ball. And there's the inbounds taken by Sarah Gordo. Stolen. And it looks like we have, and it's stolen back by Nakina. Anna Whaley now on the right wing. Picks up a dribble, gets it into Autumn Whitehead. Whitehead's 12-footer is no good. Rebounded there by Sarah Gordo, and we're heading back the other way. And ball is swung over to the right wing. There is Bowen driving baseline. She gets cut off there, gets it back to Whitehead. Whitehead picks up a dribble, and ball is loose. It's over to Bowen. Bowen gets it inside there to Strickland. Strickland near the block, gets it to Bowen. Bowen's going to dribble baseline all the way around and head out to the left wing. It looks like ball is loose and almost stolen there by Nakina, but taken back down the court by Whitehead. Whitehead pulls up. She gets it over to Strickland on the right wing, back to Whitehead. Whitehead drives baseline. Gets cut off there. Looks like we're going to have a foul on the play. We'll wait to see if that is on the floor or if. Uh, and that's going to be on the floor. So Sarah Gordo will inbound the ball. There's Whitehead, takes the inbound pass. And now with the ball, Annalee Tiffany dribbles with the pass right in to number 21, Rihanna Goodman. Her 12-footer will not go, and looks like we have a foul on the place of Sarah Gordo getting a, some good looks at the basket inside the lane, and we do have a second foul. 
And that foul is going to allow Lindsey Strickland to go to the line to shoot two. Still no score here. At three minutes and 48 seconds in the first quarter. And Strickland shot is up and no good. Well, it's hard to see that clock from here, isn't it, Justin? <laughs> yeah, stuck a roof above us. Yeah. And Strickland's second shot. It's up and it's good. It's one to nothing. Sarah Gordo here in the very early stages of first quarter. The first quarter. And so Nakana brings the ball to court. Anna Whaley calls out a play, dribbles over to the right wing, and it is stolen there by Tiffany. Tiffany's drives, ball is up. It's no good. It is recovered by, saved by Sarah Gordo, but I think she stepped out. Yep. So number 21, Rayana Gore, almost saved the ball, but she steps on the line. And it's going to be Nakina ball at in their backcourt. Yep. At three minutes and 30 seconds. And there's an entry pass into Victoria Harrelson. She gives it over to Register. Register in all sorts of trouble, and it's stolen there. Number three, Tiffany on the drive. Ball will not go. Rebounded by Nakina. And here's Brianna McClellan going the other way, and the ball is knocked out of bounds, but Nakina will maintain possession. So here's Alexa Suggs. She's going to inbound the ball. And ball was almost stolen on the inbounds. It goes out of bounds and looks like it will be the Stingers ball. Going what? into three minutes and 19 seconds in the first quarter. And we are still at one to nothing here. Here's Whitehead, picks up her dribble, gets it over to Strickland. Strickland takes a three-pointer. It is no good. It's a, a little bit off there. Nakina with the rebound. Looks like we're going to have a foul on, on a reach in on the Stingers. So Nakina will have the ball in their backcourt. And it looks like the Stingers are going to back up into a uh, Nope, looks like they're going to go full court press here. And there's the inbounds. Ball is over to McClellan. McClellan with the shot for Nakina will not go. There's a scramble for the ball, it looks like. Good jump ball. We're going to have a jump ball, and that possession arrow is going to favor Nakina. So far is... Two minutes and 48 seconds in the so first quarter. We've had several fouls, turnovers. And here comes Nakana for inbound. A long inbound to McClellan. She gets it out near the point. And there is Chestnut. Looks like we're going to have a foul on the Stingers. Inbound pass number 32 for Nakina. Still in the first quarter. And she gets it over to McClellan. McClellan drives baseline. Wanted to get it inside. And once again, we have a scramble for the ball. Another jump ball. So it is the afternoon of the jump balls. Yes, it is. Sarah Gore has the ball, inbound pass number 21. Oh, and looks like we have a we have a foul on the play. Um, player for the Sarah Gordo team lost her balance. Let's see what we have. See what possession we have here. Looks like it's going to be in a kind of ball, so it is a turnover. At two minutes and 15 seconds in the first quarter. And there's Suggs gets it into Chestnut. Chestnut drives. And we're going to have a foul on the play. Anna Whaley took the 17-footer. Looks like she got fouled. So Whaley's going to go to the line to shoot two with a chance to put the Stingers in the lead. Whaley's first shot is up. It's good. So now it's one uh, one off. So far in the first quarter. Tie ball game. This has turned into a defensive struggle. Yeah. 
Second shot. Miss. A little long rebound. Stingers. What? And ball is stolen right by, back by Nakina. Here comes McClellan. And, and Sergor took it back. And there's Tiffany. She's looking all over for some help. Here's Whitehead now on the right wing. Being guarded there by McClellan. And Whitehead dribbles all the way over to the left corner. Loses the handle, but last touch by a Mustang. So Sarah Gordon maintains possession. Here's Strickland with the inbound for the Lady Stingers. And gets it back to Whitehead near the top of the key. Back to Strickland. Three-point shot. It's a little off. Rebound by McClellan. Check that, that, that was a rebound by Goodman, and her shot will not go, so we've got Nakina going back the other way, pushing the tempo a little bit. Here's Whaley, Whaley pulls up into the three-point line, gets it over to Chestnut at the top of the key, she dribbles, and looks like we're gonna have a turnover. We're traveling, bro. Yep. So far, it's one minute and, God, I can't see. One minute and 21 <laughs> seconds left in the first quarter. One all. And one all. Stingers with the ball. There's Strickland. She gets it over to Goodman. Goodman back to Tiffany. Tiffany dribbles. Wanted to go baseline, but is cut off there. Strickland back near the right wing. And she's going to pick up her dribble and get it back to Whitehead near the top of the key to reset the offense. And there is Tiffany. Tiffany dribbles in the lane. Her shot is up. It and is it's good. good. So Annalie Tiffany with a 13-footer. At 45 seconds left. And here's a three-point shot, which is in and out by Anna Whaley. And here, Very is, close. here are the Stingers coming back the other way. Looks like we have a foul on the floor, so... Kind of reset everything and try this again. Looks like it's on the kinda, so it's gonna be inbound pass for and it's stingers ball. And ball is stolen by the Mustangs. And there's Whaley. She's pushing the tempo, and it is stolen back by Annalie Tiffany. Tiffany by footer will not go and there's a sh scramble for the ball 10 seconds left and with and Annalie Tiffany drains a nice 15 footer from the right corner at nine seconds too and shot at the buzzer will not go for the Mustangs so we are at a game was five minute uh, five for the uh, Sarah Gordon Stingers and one for the Nakana Mustangs. And Justin, a lot of defense in that first period. Yes, there was. You know what kind of game I like the most? What's that? When I see low points, that means that was a hard-fought defense and offensive match, in my opinion. Yep. And these girls were fighting hard during this first period. Um, of course, Ann Lee Tiffany for the Stingers with four points to lead all scorers. Mm -hmm. So... Here's the beginning of the second quarter. Both teams are up the huddle. The kind of Mustangs will have the ball. And almost stolen on the inbounds, and it is. Hey, no. Nope. Nope, stolen back. Here's McClellan. She pulls up the three point line, gets to Whaley. And it's a miss. Will not go. Looks like they have another jump ball. And it looks like it's for Nakana. So Nakana will make an inbound, inbound pass. Well, now it's the Sarah Gorda. Stingers will have the ball. Inbound pass to number three. They're driving and it was stolen. Now it's stolen again. Now the referee is called for a whistle. It looks like Sarah Gretel will have an inbound pass. Number 15. Strickland.
passes number two. Whitehead. Back to number 21. Number three. And it's missed. And it's stolen by the Mustangs. Number 24. Shoots for a three point. And she misses. And it's up. And Sarah Goyle had the ball. Inbound pass to Strickland. And there's a foul on the play. And kind of Mustangs with the ball. Hardwick will be passing it to Whaley. Back to Hardwick. To Chestnut. To McCullen. And it's a miss. And Hardwick has it. And she misses. Goodman has the ball for Sarah Gorda. And it's not. And she lost it and got it back. Bowen shoots. And it is 7 to 1 in the second quarter with 4 minutes and 30 seconds left to go. Hardwick has the ball. <clears throat> she passes it to Chestnut. Back to Hardwick. Passes it to number 21. Shoots, misses. Bowen has the ball for Sarah Gorder. She loses it and it's out of bounds. Right now it's 7 to 1. And 4 minutes and 28 seconds left. And the kind of Mustangs will have the ball. Hardwick. Uh, no, let's check that. Okay, Hardwick passes to Whaley. And Whaley's going to drive the baseline. And she passes at number 21, which is register. And there's a miss. It's either a miss or the foul on the play. So hard work about doing an inbound pass. And they're kind of middle school Mustangs. Exciting game, huh? Mm-hmm. Here's Nakina with the inbound. That goes to Jada Jones. And almost stolen. Looks like we're going to have a, a foul on the Stingers. So that means Nakina Mustangs will have the ball again. Hardwick will be doing an inbound pass for the Nakina Middle School Mustangs. There's the inbounds. Chestnut takes it, pulls up near the three-point line, and it's stolen by the Stingers. Goodman and lost it. And McCullen has it, lost it. Has it again. Passes to Whaley. And yep, here comes Whaley back the other way. Makes the move, drives baseline, gets Bowen stolen, stolen there by, by Tiffany, but stolen back by Whaley. Whaley with the 12-footer, no good. Rebound, Nakina will not go. Stolen by the Stingers. And here we go the other direction. And is out of bounds for number, number two, I believe. Looks like they may have a foul there. But Stingers maintain possession. No, they kind of have it. Oh, they do. Okay. Looks like it must have stepped out of bounds. What? Oh, actually, we're, we're going to fix that. I think they're going to give it back to the Stingers here. I don't know. Yep, I think so. Bowen will be doing the inbound pass for the Sarah Gordon Stingers. Pass is number two. And there's Whitehead. She drives baseline, pulls up near the three-point line. And ball and was almost stolen, but... I believe that's... Uh, yep, last yep, looks like last person who touched it was Sarah Gordon. Nope. Yeah, it was going to be Stinger ball. So it's 7-1 here. It's homecoming in the kind of middle school. And it's three minutes and 20, 20 seconds left. And we've got a loose ball. Oh, and it's looks like we're going to have a foul on number 21. I assume that is for Sarah Gordo, but we'll see what the call is here. Actually, it's going to be on the kind of, so Sarah Gordo will inbound the ball on the near sideline. Check that. The kind of will be doing an inbound pass. That will be... Number 31, Autumn Hardwick to Chestnut. Chestnut gives it back to Hardwick near the three-point line. And, and it looks like she's going to lose the handle, so we've got a turnover. 
And the Stingers will have the ball going back the other way. Still 7-1 and 3 minutes and 15 seconds left in the second quarter. So here comes Whitehead bringing the ball. She pulls up near the left wing, still dribbling. And she turns around. She's going to drive baseline. Ball is oh, up, and it is a hit off, oh, no, a off hit. the side of the backboard. And she got a little too deep there on the drive. It's going to be Nakina Ball, and here's Play Anna, Anna Whaley, Yep, bringing the ball up for the Mustangs. And she dribbles out near half court, swings around to the other side. Looks like she's looking inside. Gets that in there to Alexis Suggs. And, and Suggs looks. gets it back to Hardwick. And Hardwick's shot is no good. So here come the Stingers buzzing back the other direction. There's Whitehead with the move. She drives baseline. And a beautiful layup. Beautiful layup there by Laramie Whitehead for the Stingers. And that's going to make it 9-1 to one here. And I believe the Mustangs want to take a timeout and talk mm -hmm. it over. Two minutes left, and oh, I can't see with this thing above me. <laughs> two minutes and 22 seconds left in the second quarter. Both teams still in the huddle. We've seen a lot of defensive and offensive struggles so far in the game from both teams. A lot of fouls on the each, a lot of plays, and now Nakina will be doing a timeout and is waiting for both teams to come out the huddle. This game is a lot faster paced than I thought it was going to be. These girls like to to run and push the tempo, mm -hmm. and it's only been good defense on either end that's kept it, this from getting really. It's been it really feels faster than a high school yeah, basketball. It does. All right, so here come the Mustangs, and Anna Whaley bringing the ball up. She's going to oh she makes a move, pulls up near the three point line. Shot will not go. Rebounded by the Stingers. And here comes Tiffany the other direction, and Chestnut. she's going to be fouled. Yep. I think Chestnut was the one who got fouled for reaching in. So number 15, Strickland, passes it to Whitehead. She passes it back to Strickland. Strickland with a three-pointer. And not go. no good. Harwick got the ball. And she gets it over there to Christina Register, register back to Whaley. It looks like Whaley is going to be running the offense for most of the game. She pulls up, looking for some help, gets it over to Hardwick. She's take that chestnut. And, bo and ball oh, is wait. stolen. St stolen back. And it's jump ball. So they kind of will have possession of the ball. Number 31, Autumn Hardwick will be doing an inbound pass and the to Anna Whaley. And the Stingers are back in a 2-3 zone defense. Quick back quickly on defense. And, and ball is stolen. Anna Whaley lost control of the ball. Daniela Bowers. And Good. there is going to be out of bounds on what, Alex Chestnut, I believe his name yep. is. Yep. Good job Last by Chestnut to get back and to stop the easy basket there. So under the basket, there is there is and Whitehead. Whitehead. Almost. And shot back is good by Daniela Bowers for the Stingers. Makes it 11-1. to one. And she just started. Dude. Hardwick doing in pa inbound pass to Whaley. Back to Hardwick. 15-footer. It's and good. It's good. So now it is 11-3 to three and one minute left in the second quarter. Autumn Hardwick nails the 15-footer. For Nakina, and there's all sorts of pressure applied by the Mustangs, and that causes a turnover. So, a little shift in momentum here. And Autumn Hardwick will be doing an inbound pass deep into Sarah Gordo Distinguished Territory. Yep. Ball gets into Harrelson. Harrelson drives right wing, and looks like and we're going to have a foul on the floor. And she will be. Looks like that's. 
Doesn't look like that was a shooting foul. They're going to have the Mustangs inbound the ball. Arm Hardwick. On the, the far sideline right next to Mr. Gore. Arm Hardwick <laughs> passes the chestnut. She in trouble. And Whaley's ball gets tipped. And here come the Stingers the other way. There's Tiffany. She's going to drive. Takes a 12-footer. It's no good. Rebound by the Mustangs. And Whaley's going to bring the ball the other direction. She even gets you on the whole offense so far. And it looks like we have a foul. Ball, yeah, foul away from the ball on the Stingers. So, nope. It's on it. Mustangs. Yeah, must, must have stepped out of bounds. We cannot see the near sideline. Well, I don't so, know. She might have. Yeah. So now, now Strickland will be doing an inbound pass to Bowen. So far, we got 24 seconds left in the second quarter, and it is the Sarah Gord Stingers 11 and the Nakana Middle School Mustangs 3. And they're supposed to have a special guest at halftime. So we, we're not going to tell you who it is, but um, I look forward to a, it. A special, special guest. It says, All right. So they talked it over. It is Sarah Gordo ball. So we're, we're assuming that was not a foul, but rather a uh, player out stepped out of bounds. Yep. Right, so we cannot see. Really, we can't see about four feet of the near sideline. So. Or see the. And now they're going to go talk it over. The officials have gone over to the scoring table. And let's see if. They have made a decision. Like I said, we can't. We can barely see the floor. We can't even see the scoreboard, barely, because of this little roof thing above us. Yeah. Okay, they've got it ironed out. So Stinger ball. Here's Strickland. Inbound to Tiffany. Well, no, nope. No. Got some pressure there. On who? And that is Danielle Bowers, and she loses the handle. And but there's an immediate turnover by Nakina back the other direction. So Strickland will be doing inbound pass to Bowen. Bowen has the ball. Passes it back to Strickland. Strickland at three-point line. Looking for some help. Gets it to Tiffany. Tiffany. To, to number 23. And Strickland has the ball and with the rebound. Michaela Evans with a shot. It's no good. And it is stolen. And it is over. And, and now it is the first half. So a good half of basketball. 11 to 3. Lead for the, the Stingers of Cerro Gordo here at homecoming for Nakina Middle School. Pretty impressive game so far. Pretty impressive. As a matter of, matter of fact, I've seen a lot more, like I mentioned to you a little earlier, I've seen a lot more running than I expected to see tonight. And you know, these girls can um, can dribble, they can move in transition, and both of these teams are very evenly matched. So, I like watching middle school games because I get to see what I can do broadcasting on in future high school games. Absolutely, and one of the things we always talk about is how important middle school sports have are to all of the sports that take place in high school. Yes. And for many of these young women, this is the first time that they have been, you know, in a basketball game or a formal basketball game or played basketball, you know, other than in their backyard. So Yeah. Uh, very very important. They I know how they feel. All they do is they put their heart out on into the sport. They play nonstop as hard as they can. Because, like me, as an athlete myself, I play football at school, sure, but not like good high school football, but I like martial arts. So our, our special guest is here. All We're right. going to let him mic up. This is fun. <laughs> so I'm, I'm here with uh, principal in the kind of middle school, Mr. Richard Gore. Mr. Gore, how are you doing tonight? I am doing super. It's great to be here. So a great homecoming event, got a great crowd here. We do, our community comes out for this. We usually have a good homecoming every year. Uh, like I said, we've got a good crowd. Try to involve a lot of uh, our students in homecoming as you can hear our band playing. And we got the band, we got uh, people singing the national anthem out of the chorus. Uh, just try to tie in a lot of students uh, in this particular game. So uh, we were just talking with Justin, my partner tonight, how important 
middle school sports are for high school athletics. Uh, can you give us some perspective on the sports programs here? Yes. And what you've seen since you've been principal here in, related to when athletics. I, I started principal in the middle school elementary at the Old Dock, as you probably know. Uh, when we had athletics at that time, when I first became principal, our athletics were not very good at all. We did not have a lot going on. Didn't have a lot of sports going on. We had the basic sports. But we, as a county, as a, uh, as a group, got serious about our athletic programs in the middle school. We offered more sports. We offered soccer. We offered volleyball. Uh, you know, our cheerleading uh, programs are good. Uh, just well-rounded. You know, we have soccer for both boys and girls, basketball for both boys and girls, our cheerleading, our uh, spring sports, softball, baseball. We have a lot to offer in middle schools now, uh, and it involves a lot of students, and that's it, it develops our students so they can be well-rounded and, and gets them prepared for high school. Not all of them is going to play high school sports. This might be the last sports they play. But at the same time, they are they're able to say that at least they competed in some, some phase of their, of their school. Talk to me a little bit, uh, Mr. Gore, about your coaches. Now, you and I both coached. Right. And we know the dedication it takes at any level, but I think with middle school athletics, with kids just learning these sports, most of them, I think it takes a really special person. So talk to me a little bit about the coaches that you have uh, across the board I, and the job that they do. I feel like i got a good uh, group of coaches. Uh, I've got uh, I've got a lot of coaches. And I'm, I'm very blessed to, to be able to say that because we're very fortunate in, in the fact that I'm able to get some um, – I'm able to get uh, female coaches coach female sports. I'm able to get males coaches males, and and I got we take cheering seriously. As you can see, we got about uh, a great group, about 15 or uh, 16 cheerleaders. Uh, but it takes patience, as you know, Kelly. It's uh, it's a situation where uh, uh, they're learning. They're coming straight out of recreation, little mm -hmm. league. Mm -hmm. And it's just things that they just got to be patient and try to teach them the basic fundamentals. And, you know, just not only that, teach them some work ethic. Right. That's what I, that's what I see. Uh, I've, I've, I've had a lot of students um, that athletics has helped them tremendously in the middle school. It gives them some self-confidence, self-esteem. I probably got seven or eight cheerleaders who's, has not, who's not been involved in any type of sports. But they're in cheering, and it makes them feel so good about themselves, and, and, and their um, and their uh, self-esteem makes them feel like they're a part of something, and that's important. As it, you it's, know. it's very important. We we talk a lot about test scores and academics, and and those those things are very important. But it, especially at this age, it is very important for students to feel like there's some place where they kind of to fit in, and um, that's why I love to see these kids involved from cheerleaders. So we've got the band playing. Yeah, exactly. I mean, at Nakani Middle School, and I think all of our schools, there's a, there's something for all students to get involved in, be involved in, it, and and have something to feel good about. Exactly right. And like I said, we we work hard to promote our our our, our students in participating in, in something. Uh, and like I said, the band, chorus, the arts, uh, just just things that can make them feel good about themselves. And and and. and that's one of the things that I like that what we do here is that not only do we encourage them to play, we support them. And, and our parents support them. We got a good group, as you can see today. They come out and, and support their children. And I think that's so important, especially when you're a rural school, mm -hmm. you know, out, out kind of in the country, and, and you got something for the community to come and see and, 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 and participate in. And it, it's important. It's important. It is important. And, uh, Mr. Gore, now, you and I have known each other a long time, mm -hmm. but I, I, I love the spirit that you've created here at Nakina Middle School. Every time I come on campus, uh, the students are excited, you're excited. It's a very positive atmosphere, mm -hmm. and all of our schools are right. positive. But uh, you do a great job with the, the uh, kids. They all know you. Um, you know, they respond well right. to you, and uh, they're very fortunate to have you here. Well, and I appreciate it, but we try to, you know, I tell my students all the time is that you work hard in what we do. But we're not going to take fun out of school. You still got to be able to have some fun in school. And I'm still young enough to have enough 
as I say, youngin' in me, <laughs> that I can relate to these kids. And we try to do some fun things here, have pep rallies. We have school dances. We, But, you know, they know me, and they know that when it's time to get serious, we get serious. But at the same time, we can have fun, and it can blend in very well if you make it that way. Absolutely. And I, I was here a little earlier, and, and the, the pep rally was great. The yeah. kids really loved it. Yeah, but. and uh, we had – we. And, and we tie our, uh, we tie, try to tie some things in it to, to get kids involved, and and we we I think we do a good job of that. I really do. My staff, I got a great staff here. They know that we love our kids. They love our kids, and uh, and, and we 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 try to we try to be there for them. We try to nurture them and and, and watch them grow. And, and I, I really feel that's, that's uh, 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 one of the reasons why we have a good school. And so uh, getting ready, we've actually started the second half, but you've got homecoming festivities, I guess, happening in between. In between games, In yes. between games. So yes. that would be exciting for those of you that are watching yeah, at home. Yeah, and it's good because we've got, uh, we've got each grade level represented and uh, represented it, and uh, we uh, let the student body vote on. Uh, some schools let the people who raise money win that stuff we do this we don't do that we uh, we let our student body vote on the king and queen and uh prince and princess and uh so that's uh that's how we kind of do it have some fun things we uh we let them have dress up days this week and, and they participated very well in that and uh and like i said we we get good spirit with uh, with now and those kids, there, there's good spirit in our school. Well, Mr. Gore, thank you so much for joining us. And I thank y'all for coming. Y'all don't really have to do this, but I really do appreciate it. It gives, it's just like I said, it makes us, it makes us feel like we are kind of special today with y'all being here and, and we appreciate what y'all do and, 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 it just all it does is make things better throughout the whole county. Well, we we it's been a great day, and we appreciate and I, the, and the hospitality. I, and I did have one teacher say as she was coming from a meeting, she turned on the radio and was listening to the game. So, oh, wonderful! So you do have it's some listeners out there, so that's good. Wonderful. Well, we can't wait to see the rest of the game, Mr. Gore. Okay. Uh, thank you for everything, and uh, we'll be back here soon, man. Thank you so much. All righty. Yes, so we are back here, start of the second half, and. It is 15 to 8. And Sarah Gordo jumped out for a few quick baskets, but Nakina has come storming back. It looks like we have a turnover. It's going to be Nakina's ball. And here is the inbound all the way out front to uh, McClellan. And the ball gets loose, and here is Tiffany. For Sarah Gordo, tried to make the short jumper, could not. And there's Whitehead with a long shot that falls a little short. And so Anna Whaley brings it back for Nakina. And there is all sorts of pressure being applied now. Sarah Gordo in the full court press. And it looks like that is going to be Nakina ball. And so here's the inbound, Chestnut. Chestnut getting pressure in the backcourt. She breaks it fairly easily. Dribbles along the left wing, pulls up a dribble, back to Whaley. Whaley with a three-pointer, almost made it short, follows her shot, and it will not go. And she saves the ball, and it is recovered there by Sarah Gorda. Coming back the other way, here's Whitehead. And Whitehead takes a 10-footer, will not go, and, and rebound. Looks like we have a jump ball. Goodwin got the rebound. But they go about the jump ball. Now Hardwick's on me doing inbound pass for the kind of middle school. And it was a little confusion. The stingers, yeah, the Stingers have decided to run the full court press, and there's another turnover. A three point shot by number 21, Rayana Goodman, will not go. And ball goes out of bounds to Nakina. Looks like we're going to have a timeout on the floor. So 15 to 8 now. And it's 30 minutes and 18 seconds left. 
in the third quarter. So homecoming here at Nakina, and what a big crowd it is. And I know the concession stand must be busy because everybody that walks by me has nachos. Yeah, I was just so there. <laughs> it's uh, they almost done, I think. Yeah, it's 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 certainly tempting to go get some. That's for sure. I know. I got five dollars in my wallet. I don't <laughs> mind using. Okay, well, can I borrow five dollars? Sure. <laughs> you know, like dollar fifty. All right. So here's Whaley with the inbound. Stingers in full court pressure. Chestnut. And the ball is stolen my good, that's by right. Goodman. She cannot make the shot, and ball will go out of bounds. I think the last person to touch it was um, Nakana. Yeah, so it's 15-8 to eight now. Sarah Gordo with the ball underneath their own basket. Tiffany with the bat, the inbound, and the shot by so Whitehead. Close. Yep, fall, falls a little short, and looks like we're going to have another jump ball. And this will be ball possession arrow Sarah Gordo so Stingers will take it out underneath their own basket again Whitehead passes to Bowen and Bowen's Miss. going to be fouled and check that that was um, that was Annalee Tiffany so Tiffany who's had the hot hand lately for Sarah Gordo is going to go to the line to shoot too so she's done really well with hands in her face let's see what she does here at the free throw line First shot is up. Not good. A little short. And here is second shot. It's up. And, and it's it good. good. Nice touch. That's nice touch. So 16-8 now. Stingers. Two minutes and 50 seconds left. And Chestnut gets the ball over to Number 24, Brianna McClellan, and coming back the other way with the loose ball, here's Tiffany, and she is going to go back to the line to shoot two more. So, Annalie Tiffany is going to get a chance to shoot two more free throws here. So far, it's two minutes and 30 seconds left, I believe. I can't even see the clock. <laughs> Tiffany's first shot. It is a little short. And substitution for Nakina, that is number 13, Hannah Gore, coming into the game. Tiffany's second shot is up. And it will not go. Rebound Whaley. And she's looking for some help. Oh, someone almost got hit in the crowd. <laughs> yep, and that ball looks like that's going to be out on... Out on the kindness, so Sarah Gordo will inbound from the far sideline. Right next to the AIG room, if you know where that is. Mm -hmm. And there's Stingers into Tiffany. Tiffany with a 17-footer. It's short. And there's Hannah Gore with the rebound. Actually, that's going to be Whitehead chasing it down for the Stingers. She drives. Nice fake. Back to Gore. Gore with the shot will not go. That was well when that shot. Yep. And that's rebound there by Goodman. Goodman gets tied up, gets the ball back, back to Gore. I check that, that's Tiffany. Tiffany's shot is no good, and we're going to have a foul on the Stingers. So in that time, that was number 21, Christina Register, with a good position. She draws the over-the-back foul. And here comes number 31, Autumn Hardwick, passes it number 21. We're on a good one. It's Register, and there's the Hannah it. Gore back to Whaley. Register. And this time, looks like we have a foul. I think she lost control of the ball. But the Stingers are, have been persistent in this kind of quasi full court press they're doing. Yeah, very impressive. You know, making it difficult just to get the ball across half court. And there is a long pass over to Gore. And she's being covered by Goodman, which is a huge major height difference. I have another, it looks like we have a foul. I believe that will be on the kind of. I'm not positive. I feel kind of a little sorry for Gore there for a second. <laughs> Going against someone who's like five foot eight and she's like five she, foot. She almost uh, hit that three pointer just a moment ago. She almost did, which I'm impressed by. So here is Stingers inbounding the ball, and that's Goodman. Goodman. Number 13. To the right wing and. 
looks like we're going to have a foul. So number 15 for Nikonovic, uh Etheridge, it comes in for Hannah Gore. And, folks, it's still 16-8 here in oh. the third period. Homecoming tonight at Nakina. Thank you for joining us. This is WZCO 89.9 Chadburn, North Carolina. Morgan now when it has come subbed in for McCullen. So, so far the Stingers have the ball. Whitehead has the ball. She's Passes trapped it in the, the corner. Ball, ball gets to Tiffany and Chestnut ball. almost stolen. Looks like we're going to have a foul. So Tiff pretty quick here. The officials are deciding yeah, that Tiffany. Yeah, you're going to have to um, lay off the, the body contact. Mm -hmm. There's Whitehead near the top of the key. Guarded there by Chestnut. She dribbles to the left lane. She's got an open drive to the baseline. Will not go. Whaley rebound. So here comes Whaley. Dribbles across half court over to the left wing. And now pulls it back out and resets the offense for the Mustangs. Pulls it up. And, and is out. Tried to get it over to Morgan Nye, but the pass was a little too high. Or she couldn't jump that high. I mean, she ain't seven foot tall. So here we go with the Stingers on the turnover. And here's Tiffany. One minute left, 16 to 8. And she dribbles, puts a shot up, and it's good. So Anna Tiffany definitely with the hot hand for the Lady Stingers. So now the Stingers have a 10-point lead against the kind of smells things. It, just sa it sounds weird saying it. <laughs> here's Whaley pulls up the shot and gets it over there to Hardwick. Hardwick tried to get it in there to Etheridge, That's and the ball is stolen by Strickland. And Strickland looks like she wants to take it coast to coast. She pulls up near the block, and she's going to be fouled. So going to the line, no, check that. We're going to have an inbound underneath the Stinger basket. Strickland will do the honors underneath. And Strickland gets it way out to Whitehead near the top of the, the key. Whitehead with the three. It's good. Check that. I believe her foot was on the line. Um, yes, her uh, foot was on the line. So Whitehead gets the very long two-pointer, and so that makes it 20-8. to eight Stingers. Well point lead, and it is eight seconds left. Mustangs looking for the last shot. Chestnut has the ball. Chestnut gets it over there to Harrelson, and, and we're going to have a foul. We're going to let the, yeah, they're going to say the time has expired here in the third period. So give us the game set now, Justin. All right. Looks like Sarah Gore Stingers have a 12-point lead over the kind of Mustangs, leading with 20 to 8 so far in the now fourth quarter. Both teams have done, had defensive and offensive struggles, but so far it's been a pretty good game. If this is how the girls' game will be, I wonder how the guys' games will be. I'm sure it will be every bit as competitive. Maybe more. Who knows? We have a, a great crew here tonight from CCCA. We uh, have at least eight people with us today. And one of our uh, biggest crews that we've had here, and everybody's doing a great job. Yep. We've got... Several, a lot of ninth graders, a lot of freshmen this year with us now. And only a few 11th graders and a few 10th graders. So they come out the huddle. The kind of Mustangs will have the ball, number 34. Alex Suggs, Alexis Suggs, excuse me. We'll be doing inbound pass. Stingers back in the 3-2 zone in the half-court defensive set. And so here's Nakina with a chance to try to cut this to a 10-point lead, maybe get something going here in the fourth period. And Whaley has the ball stolen by Strickland. And here comes Goodman. Check that. That's Evans with the ball. Now it is <laughs> Tiffany. Tiffany needs some help. She's trapped, gets it to Strickland. Strickland drives baseline. Back gets to it. Tiffany. Tiffany and Tiffany 
Shot will not go, and here's Whaley back the other way. With the rebound. Whaley gets it over there to Chestnut. Chestnut drives to the top of the key. Shot is up. No good. Close. Rebounded by number and 34, Alexis Suggs, with the rebound and the putback. Well, excuse me, earlier when I said it was 28, it's now 28. That was 20 to 6. Okay. I just don't like this roof above <laughs> my head. We can't, we can't see the top half of the uh, home side digit, so. I can't even tell what the time it is. It's like five minutes, one second left in the fourth quarter. So here are the Stingers inbounding the ball. Strickland on the near side gets it over to Whitehead. Whitehead dribbles to the left corner, gets it back to Strickland near the left wing. Back to Tiffany near the top of the key. Tiffany wants to shoot, gives it up to Evans. Oh, uh, wait, that's good, and man. And we have a three-second call. Yeah, for Evans. So if, if you have any part of your body inside of the lane, you have three seconds in which you have to get outside of the lane and reestablish yourself. So you can't yep. just camp out in there. But here's Whaley. Long pass. Gets it over there to register. And jump ball, I believe. And it is four minutes and... Let me sit down there here for a second. Four minutes and 42 seconds left in the third quarter. Stingers inbound the ball. Here's Tiffany. She gets it across half court. Pulls up into the three-point line. Takes a long two, and she drains it. It is Anna Lee Tiffany with yet another basket for the Stingers. It is now 22 to 8 and 4 minutes and 20 one seconds left. And there's Etheridge getting the ball. Nice. Check that that was Harrelson. Back to Whaley. And looks like we have a stoppage play. It's going to be a Sarah Gordo ball now. So it's 22 to 8, Stingers in the lead. Four minutes and 14 seconds left to go, I believe. Yep. And here comes Bowen. Bowen for the Stingers dribbles across half court. Looks like she wants to shoot. Shot is short, rebounded by Nakaina. And looks like we have another jump ball. Number 34, Suggs, passes it to number 24. For Nakana. Yeah, and that's Brianna McClellan. Here's Etheridge. Passes back to Suggs, and it's out. Okay, so Nakana does retain possession. We've got Alexis Suggs with the inbound here. No. Yep. She's going to try to get it into. Well, ball is stolen. And it's stolen again, and the oh, ref got calls. Got another reversal. foul. So 22 to 8. Sarah Gordo Stingers in the lead. Strickland inbound the ball on the far sideline. Gets it over there to Tiffany, who's now running the offense for the Stingers. She drives, pulls up. Gets a, a pass there to Daniela Bowers, and looks like we have a jump ball, which will favor Sarah Gordo on the possession arrow. Strickland again inbound, gets it to Tiffany. Tiffany drives to the lane, shot is up, will not go. Goodman has the ball. Take that's Evans. Pass, passes the ball. Yeah, that's Evans. And then Tiffany, 15-footer, will not go. And Rebound to Kynan. Here's Whaley. Put the ball. And she is pushing the tempo. And, and she cannot control it. And it's going to go out of bounds to the Stingers. So here comes Strickland for the inbound pass. Number 13, Hannah Gore, is subbed in for number 11, and I believe that's Alex Chestnut. And we have a foul on the floor, and, and once again, the, the officials are calling things very tight, so wanting to get the, um, I guess, distance between especially the ball and the defender because they're calling a lot of fouls that are pretty, in most cases, probably are, are pretty soft. So I think they're wanting to tell the girls to, to get some distance here on offense. And it looks like we have a turnover. And then they lock. And it's back picked up by yep. Bowen. Bowen picks up the loose ball, dribbles over to the right corner. Passes and it 
two. There's Tiffany. Tiffany back to Bowen. Bowen drives all the way through the baseline to the other side, and she gets a nice pass into Danielle Bowers, and, and looks like that ball is going to be blocked, and it's going to go out of bounds. On the kind. So now number 15 for Sergio Strickland will be doing inbound pass to Bo uh, Bowen. And there's a shot that and will it go. Is good. Alexis Bowen gets the shooter touch roll. 24 to 8 and 2 minutes and four, uh, 40 seconds left in the fourth quarter. And Whaley has possession right now. And she loses possession and lost balance. And looks like we have a, it's going to be a foul. Yep, we got a foul on the play. <laughs> so inbound pass. Will be done by number 34 Suggs for the Nakana Mustangs. And nice entry. Well, it uh, picked up by Evans. Way by Evans, coming out of nowhere. Layup will not go. And check that. That was Goodman on the steal. And now it is jump ball. What the ref called uh, it. She Goodman came out of nowhere, picked that out of midair, and she was gone. So for Nakina, back in comes Autumn Hardwick. The Stingers have the ball underneath their own basket. That's going to be Alexis Bowen. She's going to inbound here for the Stingers. There's Tiffany streaking. Her shot is up, in and out. And looks like we're going to have another, another jump, jump ball. ball. This has been a game of many jump balls. And now it is in favor of Nakina. Yep. Hardwick passes to number 25. And number 25 is Morgan Nye. Losing control of the ball for a second there and, and is, lost control again. And stolen and looks she's going to let's see what the call of the foul is. Looks like that could go either way. It looked like a pushing foul. Yeah, sure. it's going to be on the stinger. So it's going to go back to Nakina. Hardwick inbound near the far half court line. Passes it to number 21. Yep, that's Register. Register needs some help. Passes it to Hardwick. Yep. Back. Tried to get it to Harrelson, but. The there, there's Goodman and no, with the layup, and it's yep. good. So Rihanna Goodman steals the ball and takes it all the way for the layup. 26 to 8 now. Stingers in the lead. In nice closing passes. moments of the, the fourth period and of the game. And there is a nice, nice pass. Great pass there. Victoria Harrelson with the look inside to Autumn Hardwick. She can't make the shot, but draws the foul and has... Two opportunities here to close this gap. Everybody's on their feet. For all people on the kind of side, everybody's on their feet. And uh, will she make it? Her shot is up. And the first one's not good. First one is no good. But close. And second shot is up, and it's and good. It good. 26 to 9 now. Stingers in the lead. Here comes Goodman, I believe. This is Goodman. Yeah. yeah she's going to inbound the ball. Kind of long great, great pass. Great pass into Whitehead. Whitehead quickly head. She's going to pull up for the long two. Almost. Almost made it. Oh, hit her. Number 11 got hit in the head. And then there is a rebound by Sarah Gordo, and there's Tiffany with another shot. Will not go. Rebound. There is Bowers, and she makes it. So Daniela Bowers for the Stingers picks up the loose change and gets the basket. So Chestnut back up the other direction. She wants to take a two, cannot get the distance. And number 15, Etheridge for Nakina. Shot is no good. Here are the Stingers back the other direction. And that is going to be Goodman. And she's going to be fouled, I believe, before she shot the ball. No, nope, so, she's going to the line to shoot two. So, Rihanna Goodman. And she'll be shooting at 56.9 seconds left in the fourth quarter. 28 to 9. And Sarah Gorsen has been outstanding so far. Let's see if she makes it. First one is no good. And let's get ready to shoot for a two. Second one. 
And it is no good. Rebounded by number 31 for Nakana Hardwick. Passes to Chestnut. She lo Chestnut loses control of the ball for a second. Back to number 15, which is Etheridge. And it gets stolen by Goodman. Then she picks up the ball. Passes it to Tiffany. She shoots for a long three and misses. Number 11 passes to Whitehead. Whitehead shoots <laughs> and misses. Almost made it. I was uh, thought that shot was going to go there for a second, Justin. That ball's going to be out of bounds to. It looked look like kickball for a second. It's going to be White, so yep. that's going to be Nakina. So number 31, Hardwick. She's inbounding. Done that most of the whole entire game. Inbounds it to Chestnut. There's Chestnut. Lost control of the ball and goes out of bounds. I believe that might be off. Yep, that's off Sarah Gordo player. So Hardwick will be going back to inbound again so far in this game. Pass it a long pass to that's number 14. It. Yeah, that's Harrelson. Harrelson tried to get it inside. Picks up. I'm going here is number 11. Yep. It. Here's pass Tiffany it number the other way. Shot won't go. Rebound Nakina. Third, number Hardwick. Uh, Hardwick gets it. And the game is over. That's 20. it, folks. Sarah Gorda Stingers, 28. And the Kinda Mustangs nine. Great game by both sides. I very great game. Uh, in, very entertaining. Very, very entertaining. Very fast. Impressive game. Especially for a middle school game. And you know these, both of these um, teams. You mentioned it when we're talking, to Mr. Gore. They've got, um, you know, some, for some of these players, it's the first time they've ever played basketball this season. And so, yeah. Yeah. great job. And I think these guys will go on next year and the year after and the year after. And we're going to see a lot of great things from both of these well, I've teams. Well, I've, I've been around the new the players for, um, let's say, for Nakana. I've even had a, a little rap battle with one of them. <laughs> Which is number 23 for Nakana. The Nakana boys. All and right. So, hey, Justin, I've got some hot off the press numbers here. All right. Uh, for Sarah Gordo, Bowen had four points. Okay. Whitehead had six points. Annalie uh, Tiffany had 11 points. Daniela Bowers had four points. I believe Strickland had one point, and Goodman had two points. That's pretty good. So for Nakina, uh, Brianna McClellan had two points. Autumn Hardwick had three. Whaley had two, and Suggs had two. So good game, and, and our high score for the game is Tiffany from Sarah Gordo with 11 points. Uh, uh, she she uh, had five baskets from the field and one from the free throw line. So I must say this. I've seen what the the kind of middle school uh, boys basketball team, I've seen them all. And I need to say this. It's going to be impressive with their height. I know one of them is like six foot five, and compared to me, I'm six foot one. <laughs> six should be, foot should be a, a very competitive game. So here we are with homecoming, and uh, we're going to call out the court. Um, and it looks like we're not going to be able to get that sound to you. Um, that's that we are we are going through homecoming here, and it kind of will give you the. The final results here in just a second. And great turnout. Standing room only here in Nakina. Yes. And I would also like to thank Mr. Rod Gore and Mr. Aaron Yates. Yeah. They're doing a lot of work behind the scenes, behind the microphones, helping students with cameras. So. Good job there, and students again are doing a, a great job. We've got several students here. We got a handful. We've even got some students that aren't even supposed to be here. 
just to watch the game. Well, I've heard. Going back to Pete's students here. The students out of here is not including myself. We got 11th grader of CCCA, Ethan Jacobs. 10th grader of CCCA, Johnny Wright. 9th grader, Angel uh, Panita Garcia. And then we got another a couple of night graders, Stacy Hatcher, Jennifer Hernandez, Yara Seth Salas, and Titus Green. And then for t another 10th grader, myself, and then another, last but not least, so 11th grader, Charles Shaw. So we got a good crowd tonight. Very good crowd. Okay, so we're, we're waiting for the results for the, the kind of middle school homecoming. So we have a prince and a princess, and a king and a queen. And the envelope is being opened. So suspenseful. <laughs> so everybody's like all oh, quiet. So Luke Ray and Amber Perkins are your prince and princess of the sixth grade. So congratulations to those folks. And if you're listening to, to us on the radio, WZCO 89.9 FM, Chadburn, um, the footage of this will be up on YouTube and on WZCO.org. So we've got sixth grade, waiting for seventh grade now. Grayson McKeithen is the seventh grade prince. Kid has some long hair, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Can't even keep the crown on his head. <laughs> so congratulations to him. And just waiting now for the seventh grade princess, I believe it is. Seventh grade princess is Katie Cluis. Seventh grade princess is Katie Cluis. So. Mr. Seventh grade princess, they're still trying to keep the crown on. That's okay. I can't blame him. I know my dad, he used to have long hair. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> I don't want to really see him with long hair. He looks just like me, apparently. We look, we look the same. And he had long hair back then. I can't, I don't believe that. And now awaiting for the yep. king and queen. Yep. So Bailey Chestnut is the homecoming king. And he has to place at this too as well. <laughs> I think he'll probably take the crown off before the game. Hopefully. Yeah, that, that would be an unfair advantage. Just headbutt him in the stomach. <laughs> that would hurt. And we have Laramie, I believe we said, she said best, um, is the homecoming queen. I apologize, we could not hear the name clearly. Yeah, okay, yeah. 
So congratulations to the entire court. Well, there's one good thing about middle school. You don't have to worry about prom yet. Yeah. <laughs> so we are getting ready for the boys game. And this is going to be explosive, I hope. I think it will be. And just want to run down the rosters for you. For Sarah uh -huh. Gordo, we have Hunter Tiffany, Noah Horton, Ethan Jenkins, Michael Meadows, Dawson Elliott, A.J. Shipman, Kobe Williamson, Emmanuel Davis, check that, uh, Raheem Davis, and Cody Richard. For Nakaina, we have Christian Hernandez, Jamie Harrelson, Nathan Ward, Bailey Chestnut, Grayson McKeithen, Dylan Long, and Joseph Hickman. We also have Nathaniel. We also have Nathaniel Panetta, Jarrett Whittington, Griffin Hanna, Zach McCoy, and Hugh Smith. We also have for you a very special guest coming up here. And so we have the newly inaugurated Nakina Homecoming Queen. And I did not catch your last name. Say your name for us. Laramie Beck. Laramie Beck. So congratulations. I'm sure you're excited. Yes, sir. Um, so what was it like when they called your name? I was very nervous. <laughs> I wasn't sure <laughs> if I was going to win. And yeah. then it's like I didn't catch on that they called my name until after. And they all started looking at me. And I was like, yeah. oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I've been in that situation where you're thinking about, you know, okay, they're going to call your name. And you're thinking about any name but yours. So. Uh-huh. But um, certainly very deserving. And mm -hmm. so tell us a little bit about what things you like to do and what, why you like Nakina Middle School. I like Nakina because Mr. Gore does all these fun stuff with us. He, like, he makes learning fun. Like, the high success maker scores always get to do something. We'll have pizza parties. And he's actually talking about something that we're going to start doing some Fridays when we let everybody that wants to play play a game of basketball and pay $2 for a slice of pizza. Okay. And uh, <laughs> And we, I talked to Mr. Gore at halftime, mm -hmm. and uh, one of the things that I, I said, Mr. Gore, is you know your students, you know, really look up to you and have a great, mm -hmm. you have a great rapport with your students, and, mm -hmm. and I agree, the kind of middle school is a fun place to, to learn and to play and, uh -huh. and to just be a, a student. So. It is. And and so you're going to South Columbus next year, yes. so that'll be exciting, mm -hmm. um, and en encourage you certainly to take uh, arts classes there at South Columbus. Mm -hmm. I'm the arts coordinator too, so I have to get a plug in there. Plus, <laughs> oh, okay. my, my wife works there as well. Okay. But um, we're really fortunate that we have a lot of opportunities here at Nakina uh -huh. and at South Columbus. So so in your spare time, what, what sort of things do you like to do? Well, I've been dancing since I was three years old. I love dancing. I have all these extra practices, and when I get home, I always do my homework, get it done, watch <laughs> TV or do whatever, and I usually go with my sister to dance and help her. And where do you take dance? Loris, CPAC. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So, yeah, and um, dance is one of those things where, and, and believe it or not, I used to teach dance, and my mm -hmm. wife uh, teaches dance now. She's the dance instructor at South mm -hmm. Columbus High School. But dance is one of those things that um, once you start, you almost have to continue. Yeah, it's it like gets you just hate you. to give it up. you yeah. got to keep going with yeah, it. Yeah, so you'll have a lot of opportunities, certainly from here on out, not only in your studio, but, but at South Columbus. So. Mm -hmm. We're excited to see what you do in the coming Thank years you. and just want to congratulate you again. Mm -hmm. And it's Laramie Beck, correct? Yes, sir. Um, very well deserved. You are the 2013 Nakina Homecoming Queen. Mm -hmm. So um, we look to, to hear and see great things from you, not only here at Nakina, but South Columbus uh -huh. and college and all the great things that are, yes, are yet to come. So. Thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you for having go, me. Go, and, go celebrate now. I will. You? <laughs> <laughs> and folks, we are almost ready to get the boys game underway. Thank you. Thank you. And teams are out on the floor getting ready to roll and we're ready for a good game. So once again, I want to run down the Kinas lineup. We kind of rushed through there. Uh, Christian Hernandez, Jamie Harrelson, Nathan Ward, Bailey Chestnut, Grayson McKeithen, Dylan Long, we also have Joseph Hickman, Nathaniel Panetta, Jarrett Whittington, Griffin Hanna, 
Zach McCoy, and we also have Hugh Smith. And once again for Cerro Gordo, Hunter Tiffany, Noah Horton, Ethan Jenkins, Michael Meadows, Dawson Elliott, A.J. Shipman, Kobe Williamson. We also have Raheem Davis, 33 is Cody Richard, and 21 is Emmanuel. So almost ready to roll here. Officials are out at center court talking to the team captains, going over a few game considerations. And, of course, officials come in and they have things that they want to focus on too, and a lot of times they'll share those things with the players to make sure they know, hey, in this game we're going to be watching this particular aspect. We're going to be watching, uh, you know, how you're blocking out. We're going to be watching, um, you know, how much pressure, how much you're actually pressing someone with your body as you are dribbling up the court. So. Those are all things that will be discussed out there at that mid-court conference. And once again, it's homecoming at Nakainen. If you're just joining us here on WZCO, the uh, girls game, the Cerro Gordo Stingers won over the Nakaina Mustangs. And we are just getting ready, almost ready to start here, the boys game between Cerro Gordo and Nakaina. So had a great homecoming festivity here at halftime. And if you've ever been in the gym at Nakina, there is no room to sit. It's all pretty much standing room only. So great crowd here tonight. A lot of people enjoying basketball and ready to see these boys play. And going over some stats from the girls game once again, if you missed those. For Sarah Gordo, girls, Alexis Bowen had four, Laramie Whitehead had six, and Lee Tiffany had 11. She was a game high score. Daniela Bowers had four. Also, Strickland had one, and Goodman had two. For Nakina, Alexis Chestnut, or Alex Chestnut had 11. Check that, I'm sorry. Uh, McClellan had two. Hardwick had three. Whaley had two. And Suggs had two. And we are ready to roll here. Have about a minute and 20 seconds left to go before the start of the, the boys game between Nakina and Cerro Gordo. Just to let you know, we're going to be taking a break from basketball this Friday. And uh, this is our game of the week for our students from CCCA. Taking a break there. We will be back next week, and we're going to be gearing up for some conference tournaments. So not quite sure where we'll be as those play out, but we're going to uh, try to close out the season and try to bring you some of those conference tournaments with the uh, excellent work going on here with the students from CCCA. Winding down now about 15 seconds. And it is time for us to, to get started. We'll have game introductions in just a moment. And there's the buzzer. So teams are going to clear. And we'll bring you those introductions here in just a moment. Bring you these lineups here. Number one, Hunter Tiffany. Number three, Ethan Jenkins. We have Hunter Tiffany, Ethan Jenkins for Sarah Gordo. AJ Shipman. AJ Shipman for Sarah Gordo. Number 21, Emmanuel Evans. 21, Emmanuel Evans. Number four, Michael Meadows. And now for the starting lineup, number 15, Kobe Williamson. And we have uh, number three, Raheem Davis. Raheem Davis. Number five, Dawson Elliott. And number 33, Cody Richard. And we just. Mr. Jason Nance. 
We have the rest of the Saragorda lineups there. And now we'll do Nakina. We have number 10, Nathan Ward. Number 33, Nathaniel Panetta. Number 33, Nathaniel Panetta. Number 20, Grayson McKeithen. We also have Zach McCoy and Dylan Long. Finally, Jamie Harrelson. And number 40, Griffin Hanna. Along with Griffin Hanna. So starters tonight, Bailey Chestnut. Number two, Christian Hernandez. Christian Hernandez. Number 23, Nick Chu. Hickman. <laughs> 20, 23, Hickman. And Hugh Smith. And Hugh Smith. And number 35, Jarek Whittington. And finally, number 35, Jarek Whittington. Justin, you ready to go? Mm -hmm. So here we go. So we've got number 33. And that's going to be Cody Richard going up against Hugh Smith for the tip. Opening tip off here. We are ready to go, folks. And it is controlled by Controlled by Sarah Gordo. Looks like we are right. This one's more aggressive than the girls game. Nice. That was a nice layup. So it looks like the ball goes out of bounds and Nakana is going to take over now on their first offensive possession and bringing the ball up the court is the homecoming king. <laughs> Bailey Chestnut. He shifts it over to Christian Hernandez. Her Hernandez back to Chestnut. Looking almost stolen there. There's Chestnut pulling the ball up. Gets it in there to Hickman. Hickman looks like the pass is intercepted. Here goes Sarah Gordo back the other direction. Dawson Elliott shifts back to Horton. Looks like we're going to have an opening foul. Sarah Gordon maintains possession. And ball is tipped. Pulled down by Hernandez coming down the other way. Chestnut for the three. In and out. And, and ball is out of bounds to Nakina. Out of bounds to Nakina. Nakina's got some big boys on this team. <laughs> Jared Whittington inbounds to Chestnut. Chestnut drives baseline, gets a pick by Whittington. Ooh. Nice and stop. Yep, back out to Whittington on the wing. He dribbles back to the top of the key. Gets it to Chestnut on the left wing. Give and go there to Whittington. Nice pass over to number 23 Hickman, but the ball will not go. So, is it means to feel like there's only two people on the kind of team that's shorter than me, <laughs> and the rest of them are taller than me, like they're, six they're foot definitely, five. Definitely big. And they're back in. They're huge. They're back in a looks like a two-three zone now. There's the ball in to number five. That's going to be Elliott with the shot. Will not go. Nakina with the rebound. And that's going to be Whittington. Tried to get it ahead to Smith. Picked off. And here comes Dawson Elliott. This is a good game. And Elliott gives the ball back to Horton with the top of the key. Over to Davis. Davis back to Elliott for the three. Will not go. Rebound. Mustangs. Here's Whittington bringing the ball up the court. Navigating traffic, pulls up near half court. Gives it back to Chestnut who resets the offense. And we just had to talk with his homecoming queen. Yep. So here's Chestnut. Over to Hernandez. Tried to get it in there to Hickman, but ball is intercepted. 
number 33 for Sarah Gordo, which is Rich Trout, Rich Trout or something like that. And nice pass into Elliott. Elliott kicks it back to Hickman. Check that. That is uh, Davis. Davis with the drive, but the ball will not go. So here's Nakina back the other way. We have no score here in the first period. Chestnut dribbling out near half court. Ball is loose. Bailey Chestnut has it. Passes it to Hernandez. And loose Number ball to Davis. Davis with the shot will not go. Here is Hickman with the rebound. Pulls out near the left corner. And he dribbles back to the top of the key. Wants to drive lane, does. Ball will not go. And there's Whittington with the rebound. Shot no good, but foul on the play. So, Jared Whittington's going to go to the line to try to break this 0-0 tie. Mm-hmm. So, first quarter, no score. Sets up for the first shot. No good. Second shot, it is no good. And that's gonna be out on the Mustang, so it's Stinger ball. No score here in the first period. And Justin, it looks like there is a lid on both ends of the court on the on the basket. Yes. Teams cannot is. convert. And here's Hunter Tiffany. Well, like and I said. And it's stolen by, by Hernandez. Hernandez. Layup, and, oh. will not go. Dawson Elliott, back the other way for the Stingers. They've got numbers. No good. Pass was a little hot there for Michael Meadows. Pass it to Bailey Scott. And he's going to bring this in. Here's Chestnut. Oh, excuse me, Bailey's Chestnut is what I meant to say, not Scott. Uh, Chestnut out on the left wing. That's number 23. Yeah, that's over to Hickman. And, and ball is almost picked off. Looks like we're it's out. It'll be the kind of ball. It, and it's... It really isn't just us. So the uh, the officials are not calling the direction, so we're we're kind of guessing. But it looks I'm like guessing. that one. Yep, it's Nakina. Well, there's the ball in the Chestnut left corner. He gets it back to Whittington near the left wing. Whittington's going to dribble back and back to Chestnut in the left corner. He drives baseline. And oh, shot, shot is blocked by AJ Shipman. Shot is mm. blocked. Well, going back to saying like. We don't know. That one, I kind of saw it going out of bounds or getting hit out of bounds or whichever happened to it. Chestnut's running 10-footer is no good. Here's Tiffany back the other way. And he passes number 23 back to 15. Back to, back to number 23. Yep. Being blocked by Hernandez. And 15, that's and, Kobe Williamson with the three-pointer. No good. No Rebound, Nakina. And... Number 35 has the ball for Nakana. Now he's, oh, and Hernandez has butterfingers and not catching the ball. So coming back the other way. Um, Tiffany. Tiffany's going to swing it over to Davis. Davis back in the corner to hmm. Elliott. Elliott wanted to drive baseline. It looks like we're going to have... A three-second violation on the Stingers. So they'll, right away, they're saying you cannot camp out underneath the basket. You're going to have to move out, reestablish yourself, and move back in. Yep. Still no, nothing all. Still no score. There's Chestnut back to Whittington near the top of the key. Chestnut goes in rotation. Now that's back out to... Hickman, whose three-pointer is in and out. And that's as close as you can get without making a shot. Yeah, that is. Okay, Dawson Elliott. Tried to pass it. Looks like we're going to have a foul on something. Uh, it looks like it's out of bounds one direction or the other. It's one. Or the okay, looks like it is going to be Sarah Gordo still. Tiffany has it. Yep, Tiffany gets it back over to Evans. Evans back to Tiffany near the right wing. That must be, what's his, what's your name's brother? And here we go, Chestnut with the steal. He pulls up near the three-point line. And there's an open Hickman with the layup, and it will not go. 
<clears throat> Everybody's getting good looks at baskets, but they just simply will not go down. So looks like I guess in that Hunter Tiffany guy, his sister was playing earlier. I'm Might guessing. be. That that's pro probably makes for some good pickup games at home. Is as good as they both can shoot. That's the best thing, in my opinion, is if you're having a little brother, big brother, twin brother, or sister, or whatever, that plays basketball at the same school as you, that'd be the best idea. Train with them, do it together, because they understand what you're saying, and it's easier, more simple than doing something like with your father if he hasn't played. <laughs> That's a good ball rotation there. And good ball rotation by the Stingers. And that was I Noah Horton with the shot and the foul, but they're saying the foul was before the shot. So It was. Uh, look, so Sarah Gordon is going to have the ball underneath her own basket. There's Dylan Elliott, Dawson Elliott. And it looks like we're going to have a travel call. It's going back the other way, Mustang ball. And it's now 14 seconds exactly left. And we still have no score here in the Ooh. first period. And there's a loose ball. And last person who touched it was Sarah Gordo. That's a... Excellent job there by Davis trying to save the ball, but couldn't handle it. Here's Nakina. There's the inbounds to Smith. Smith tries to get it up ahead, and ball goes out of bounds, but the Mustangs retain possession. So Whittington's going to inbound from the far half-court line right in front of the scorer's table. Both teams in the stack here. Nakina on the inbound. And... Davis, I checked that, that is Evans. Back into the ground. Yeah, that's Raheem Davis for the Stingers. Knocks it out of bounds, so we're going to try again. And here's the bounce pass to Chestnut. Now Chestnut trying to get some distance, crosses half court, gets it over to Hickman a little too hot. So with no score here, winding down the first period, We're going to have the Stingers. No good. With a, actually a pretty good look there. That was pretty good. Raheem shot. Davis, ball off the backboard, but will not go. So, folks, there's no score here in the first period. And both of these teams have had probably half a dozen good looks at the basket. Very good. Not able to knock it down. We got the band playing here, sounding good. Both teams still in the huddle for the second quarter. Still zero to zero. This is probably, this took longer than that girls game. And it's just been because of good defense. Every shot there, inside is contested. Great. Even you'll think somebody will be in the open and, and a player hustling will make the shot go off or make the player adjust the shot. And That's true. So here we are, second period. And it looks like we're going to have Nakina to start the second period. They're going to have the ball. Number 35 for Nakina. Yeah, that is Jarrett Whittington. He's going to inbound. Well, well looks like we're going to have a discussion at the scorer's table about who has possession. And he, I guess he will be passing it to Bailey Chestnut. And, and I believe he graduates next this year, he'll be going to either Lakina High or wherever he's going. South Columbus. Or yep, South Columbus. Yep. So there is Hickman, inbound to Hickman, and Chestnut gets it in there to Panetta. Panetta's shot is no good. Here's Dawson Elliott back to Noah Horton. And a three-pointer by Raheem Davis is no good. And here's Whittington. Bringing the ball up the court for the Mustangs. And, and the ball is stolen by Davis. Hey, talking about South Columbus. And Davis with the turnover. Talking about South Columbus, they got a seniors night tonight. Oh, that's a, they'll, they had homecoming tonight in the kind of seniors night in, yep. in uh, South Columbus. Because my girlfriend does color guard there. And I've also heard some good news. Remember our good friend, for South Columbus uh, football team, the quarterback. Yep. Well, he, Aaron McKeever. He got a, a he got signed for an NC State Wolfpack and football team. 
Yeah, it'll be exciting to see what uh, what he does as a wide receiver in, in the next few years. Absolutely. Ball goes out of bounds, and he does starts playing like goes to college after this year, I think. All right. So here is here are the Stingers coming back the other way after the turnover. Still no score here well into the second period. There's a two-pointer by Horton, will not go. Rebound by the Mustangs. And here's Whittington bringing the ball up the court, gets it ahead to Chestnut. Chestnut, 15-footer, partially blocked, gets his own rebound. Whittington, he's going to drive, tries to get it back to Chestnut. Chestnut bringing it back to the top of the key, gets it ahead. Gets it ahead to Hickman, but three seconds called on the Mustangs. So we're going back the other direction yep. with the Stingers. It is now four minutes and 30 seconds left as a guest, because I can't still, we can't see with this little roof thing above us. And here's Raheem Davis. Nice. Gets it over to Noah Horton, and Noah Horton breaks the drought for and both teams. Two to nothing Stingers here in the second period. Now let's see if that two-pointer actually was a mistake because it might, who knows, you might have lit something you don't want lit. <laughs> Here's Chestnut over to Whittington and the ball goes out of bounds. Looks like we're going to have it. Uh, it's going to be Stinger ball. Here's Davis over to Horton. Horton brings the ball up the court for the Stingers. Way over into the right corner and that shot Close. by Kobe Williamson is a little bit off. Here's Whittington on the rebound, coming back the other way for Nakina. He pulls up the dribble. And he's looking for somebody. Here's Davis. Davis drives baseline. 10-footer, a little bit off. And with the rebound is Panetta. Panetta now drives baseline. Shot is up. Will Ooh. not go. Smith with the rebound and the putback. It is no good, but... He is fouled on the play, so Hugh Smith for the Mustangs will shoot two with a chance to tie this game up. Now, for people watching at home, this guy is at least six foot four, six foot five. An estimate weigh, weighs more than me. His first shot is up. He's and it this is guy's huge. a little off. This guy is a huge player. Impressive too. Smith's second shot is up. No good. And will not go. Rebound there. And, and it's two. It's two off. Joseph Hickman with the offensive rebound and the putback. So here, here are the Stingers. Williamson over to Davis. Davis over to Horton. Horton thought about shooting it. And looks like uh, Elliott does. Shot is no good. Rebound there by Davis. Yep. And that is no good. It looks like we're going to have jump a, ball. a jump ball. We've seen plenty of them tonight. So, stinger ball on the possession. Elliott's going to try to inbound. He does. He gets it into Horton. Horton with the three. No good, but there for the rebound. Well, and great outlet pass by Smith to Chestnut. Smith. Hugh Smith for the Mustangs had a beautiful outlet pass to Chestnut. Chestnut was contested on the layup. And he, I should say him, and the, uh, he kissed the floor when he did. And it looks like we have a foul on that play on the kind of on the over the back on the rebound. So Stinger's going the other direction. We're all tied up here, folks, two to two. And we are nearing the end of the first half. And there's a steal by Hickman. Hickman wants to run. He's going to pull up for a long two. Very no good. Close. Rebound Elliott. And here comes Noah Horton for the Stingers. And Christian Hernandez came, subbed in for um, Bailey Chestnut. And After that little slip he made. Dawson Elliott with the drive, and he's going to be fouled. And he will go to the line to shoot two. Impressive game so far. I haven't seen any game like this before, this aggressiveness in a middle school. Uh, this is definitely a defensive battle right here. Dawson Elliott's first free throw is up, and it's yeah, good. good. Gives the Stingers a 3-2 lead now. Baby. Two minutes left to go here in the second period, in the first half. 
and Bailey Chestnut has came back in, subbed in for Christian Hernandez. No, not Christian Hernandez, but um, I did not see who it was. And then number 10 subbed in for number 33, and the second one's good. Dawson Elliott gives the Stingers a 4-2 lead. Here's Chestnut bringing the ball up the court. And he wants, looking inside to Smith, and Nathan Ward chases it down. Smith with a loose ball, and it's good. Hugh Smith with the six-footer from the right side. Nice little hook, jump hook there, and there's a steal. Smith picks it up. Outlet pass is tipped, and that's going to be Mustang ball. I, I, Hugh Smith can throw the ball a mile. Yes, he can. He, that play before that, he, he threw the ball down the court in a flash. I right, remember so here, that. Here's Chestnut, right wing, with the ball. He's going to rotate around to the top of the key, over to Whittington. Whittington thought it, about it inside, but pulls it back to Chestnut. And in the corner, there's Ward. And looks like we've got a travel on the play. On the, uh, yep, so it's going to be number 33 for Sarah Gordo. Cody Richard uh, is doing inbound pass to, I believe that's Noah Horton. And here's Horton bringing up the offense for the Stingers. Kicks it over to Williamson. Williamson with the three, and he buries it from the left wing. First three-pointer I've seen so far this evening. Kobe Williamson with the three-pointer. Now to kind of quickly up ahead. Hickman in the corner, and it's stolen. Stolen by Cody Richard. And here is Noah Horton coming back the other way. Flips it to Williamson, and it's hey, stolen. Hey, Christian Hernandez. Hernandez. Oh. Layup will not go. Battle for it. Smith ends up with it near the free throw line. His shot is almost up, in, and out, but he is fouled. So str struggle for the ball. Hugh Smith comes down with it, takes a 12-foot jump shot, will not go, but he is fouled on the play. And 7-4, to four, Hugh Smith with an opportunity to bring the Mustangs within one if he hits these two free throws. I know how he feels with this. You want to make every shot. And he misses his first free throw. I mean, you're carrying your team on your back. Every point counts. Every po In this game, I think every point is going to count. It's going to be a close, close game. Like, well, every kind of sport does points. Martial arts does points. For, like me, example, we do point system. And that second point is, second shot is good. Seven. Yeah. Seven to five, and we have a turnover on a travel. So here are the Mustangs with an opportunity here with 120 left to go in the first period, mm -hmm. in the first half, excuse me, chance to, to tie the game. Here's Chestnut deep in the left corner. He dribbles to the right wing, gives it to Smith near the free throw oh, line. Wait. He loses the handle on it, but Panetta, Panetta does a little turnaround and we're waiting to see if the shot count. He made it. No, they're gonna. They're gonna do. It. I'm a little confused. Wait a minute. Why he'd be shooting two? But we're, he's shooting two free throws. Nathaniel Panetta. I'm, I'm confused. Okay, so the first one's good. So set one point difference. If he makes the next one, he'll tie it up. Seven to six, and shot is off. Rebounded by Williamson of the Stingers. And now 55 seconds, oh, 51 seconds left. And ball is on the floor. It's a loose ball, and it's going to be, it's going to be the Mustang ball. So with under a minute left to go, it is seven to six. Mustangs with a chance to take the lead. They have the ball. Raheem Davis comes in for Christian Hernandez. And here's Chestnut bringing up the offense. He dribbles over to the right wing. Switches over near the top of the key. Pass into Smith. And Smith with the turnover, so that's going to be Stinger ball. And so now with 39 seconds left. 
Here comes Horton. He swings it over there to Davis. Davis crosses court to Tiffany, and Tiffany's shot will go out of bounds untouched. So that's going to be Mustang ball. And now the Stingers switch to a full court press. Here's Hernandez on the far sideline, and he tip. ball so is tipped out of bounds. So this is Mustang ball. It's going to be Mustang ball, but now with the Stingers in the full court press, looks like they're really trying to deny the Mustangs that final shot here of the first half. So uh, Whittington with the inbound, and there's Chestnut. He's open, drives baseline, shot is up, and, and it's, it's good. good. Now it is. Uh, eight, now it's a one point difference, but reversed. It is now eight to eight seven. The seven. And so here comes the Stingers. We have under 10 seconds left to go. We have a foul on the floor. And, and so here's your game set eight to seven. Nakai in the lead. Stingers will inbound from the near sideline. Mm -hmm. Noah Horton deep in the corner. 13-footer will not go. Here's Whittington with a chance across half court. Ball's up. Almost. And it was on target. It was, yeah, it was on target for Mr. Gore. <laughs> so that's the end of the first half of the boys' game, folks, and it is 8-7 with the Mustangs in the lead. And so I have, we have another very special guest here. We'll introduce her in just a second. So our very special halftime guest is Miss Rachel Smith, who's lead teacher here at Nakina, and you're also at Hallsboro Middle. So yeah. I appreciate you volunteering to come and speak with us here at, at halftime, Rachel. Less, less of a volunteer, more of a draft. Well, but I, I am glad to be here with that's, you today, Kelly. That's education, right? <laughs> I, I do want to talk to you a little about um, the role of a lead teacher. And lead teachers are something that have basically been a recent development here in Columbus County. And um, I think when you talk to most people who are familiar with what lead teachers do and with the growth that we've had in the recent past, a lot of that growth can be attributed to the work that lead teachers do. So tell us a little about the role of a lead teacher and, and what, what are some of the things you do during a given week? Well, um, there have been some um, people in this role in the past, but kind of by different names, we, with slightly different roles. We've had people that have been instructional um, helpers, and some schools have had reading specialists. But the lead teachers um, serve some of those roles, but also are kind of a liaison between the county and the schools. So a lot of times we attend trainings and take things back to our schools. We meet as lead teachers in PLCs and professional learning communities and share ideas and um, things that can improve all of our schools. And so what are some of the things you do in, in terms of actual interaction with teachers here, for example, at Nakina? What I try to do is be a resource in any way I can to teachers. And so that sometimes involves helping them select curriculum materials, going into classrooms and modeling instruction, or helping with new programs. For instance, this week I've been doing a lot with Right to Learn, which is a really exciting new program we have in our elementary and middle schools where students get to practice their writing online and um, the computer is a resource here and does some of the grading and so for this is a new thing for both the teachers and the students so I'm able to go in there as a resource and help them get going with that. And one of the things that I see a lot of um, lead teachers doing and I know you do this because we've you know had these conversations and, and worked on some projects together but it is so important to have another set of eyes that can go in a classroom and see how things can be improved. And I think that's one of the most valuable things that a lead teacher can do because um, certainly principals go in there, but a lot of times principals have so many other duties that it's nice to have somebody whose primary and really only function is instruction. 
Yeah, it really helps have somebody be able to focus on curriculum because the principals, they're obviously the curriculum leader of the school as well, but they have a lot of administrative tasks to attend to as well. And so we as lead teachers get to be in those classrooms more, sometimes for just short periods, doing a walkthrough, sometimes for longer periods, observing for specific things. And um, sometimes I have teachers that ask me to come in because they appreciate um, having some feedback and um, I always find good things in our classrooms and sometimes I think of something that they hadn't thought of and a lot of times I'll think of, I'll see things that I hadn't thought of that, that I can share with other with, with teachers. Other teachers. Yeah. And, and that's one of the powerful pieces of the lead teacher setup because you have that time to go in, what you see good in one classroom can easily be spread and you can help implement it and share it with other teachers. Yeah, I, I certainly am not the be all end all expert. I'm just a sharer of information and I'm in a position where I get to see a lot more than the average teacher does. So I love to find something that a teacher is doing really well and then uh, force her <laughs> to share that <laughs> with others. And most people are, more, uh, oh. most teachers are so happy to be able to do that. Oh, the, we're getting ready for our, our game. Oh, what's going on here? Oh, 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 I thought that's what you were stopping for, the kids. Oh, the no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> the, the cheerleaders are proving on a show. Okay. Oh, <laughs> I would do a play-by-play, -play, but I don't know, think I, could, <laughs> okay. I, I could, could call that one. Um, yeah. Going back, just talking a little more about your role. Mm -hmm. And, and you're, you're in middle school, and I think you're, you're, you're at Hallsboro Middle mm -hmm. as well as here. What do you think is one of the most challenging things about teaching middle school? I mean, it, it is very, and I have a middle school student, so I, I know what I'm speaking about. Uh, it's very challenging. What, what do you see as some of the challenges that teachers at this level have? Well, there's a lot of things unique to teaching in middle school. They're obviously not elementary students. You don't need to hold their hand and walk them through everything. And um, in the elementary setting, most of our students are self-contained. They're with the same teacher um, most of the day and so when they get to middle school they are getting used to that changing classes so that's a transition for our students but also the difference between middle and high school is usually we kind of have a team approach most um, of our students go to some teachers for more than one subjects like they might have the same teacher for math and science and so that is an advantage for our students because it's more like a, a team. It's not just th being thrown into high school without that transition. But that does provide a challenge for our teachers as well because they are not just responsible for one subject as they would be at a grade at the high school. In fact, sometimes they're teaching multiple subjects at multiple grade levels. And to address this concern, because that's something a lot of our teachers have brought up, um, this month we've been doing some grade um, and content level PLCs at our district office. So, can, for, can you explain what a PLC is? A professional learning community, and so that's a time for teachers to get together and discuss problems and discuss things that they can do to make their instruction better. Um, talk about things that are going really well for them. So like today, for instance, we had one with our sixth grade science teachers and the science teachers are able to get together sometimes, but this was the first time that all of our sixth grade science teachers were together in one room because some of those teachers are primarily math teachers mm -hmm. or primarily language arts teachers. Right. And so usually they meet with those um, teachers if we have a work day that focuses on curriculum. So we really um, have enjoyed having this opportunity to, to meet very specifically with these um, content areas. And the teachers really enjoy being able to get on the same page with other teachers and share resources and ideas. And so I, I just want to say on behalf of, I know everyone in the kind of middle and Hallsboro middle, you know, what a difference you've made in those two schools. And of course, it's, it's a team effort. Oh, I, I work with two wonderful staffs, and I'm very, very glad for the teachers and the principals and other staff that I work with every day. They, they make it easy to um, be their lead teacher because they are very open to any help that I give them, and they have really improved myself as an instructor from learning from them. And so, of course, we have great lead teachers in, in the county and uh, the work that they do, I, I really think, just look from my perspective, it's one of the things that we've done that have, have moved our students and our county forward. I agree. Um, because it is that focus on instruction, that one person, that that's, that's what they wake up thinking about and that's what they go to bed thinking mm -hmm. about. So. stay up thinking about sometimes. <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> sometimes. Well, Rachel, uh, our guest has been Miss Rachel Smith, who is the lead teacher at Nakina and Hallsboro Middle Schools. 
And so we appreciate the work you do, and we appreciate you coming by to talk to us. Thank you, Kelly. I appreciate it. We'll talk to you again soon. So here we are now with the second half, and Sarah Gorda with the ball. There's a running shot by number five, Dawson Elliott. It is no good. And Nakina's back the other way. Hickman loses the ball out of bounds, and we are back the other way with the Stinger ball. So Mustangs with the lead, 8-7, to seven, but here come the Stingers looking to break this, looking to break, turn this into a one-point game again. But there's a turnover by the Stingers, so now Nakina is coming back the other direction. Here come the Mustangs. Whittington bringing the ball up the court. He's looking for the offensive set. Here's Chestnut setting a screen. Opens up Whittington. Whittington drives the lane. Shot is up and is good. A beautiful shot by Jarrett Whittington. Driving the lane. Got a nice pick from Chestnut. Opened up the lane and it's two points. So it's 10 to 7 now. And here's, here's Elliott setting the offense. Gets it over to Horton. Horton with the pass inside. It's picked off there by Smith. Smith outlet quick to Chestnut. And Chestnut pulls up and says, hey, y'all, let's, uh, let's run our offense. Here's Chestnut, top of the key, over to Whittington, left wing. Inside to Smith. Smith kicks it over to number 23. That's Hickman. Hickman shot will not go. Smith rebound back up. Will not go. And looks like the rebound is going to be off of the Stingers. So it is Mustang ball. So here's Whittington with the inbound. Gets to Chestnut. Chestnut's going to drive. Shot is up. 10-footer, no good. Rebounded by Hickman, no good. Ball is up. And Whittington gets the rebound. So three shots at it for the Mustangs, but shot will not go. But Whittington's fouled, so he's going to go to the line with a chance to put the Mustangs up by a solid five points. I believe that was where he made it, so he got that one. Instead of Hickman. Yep, I believe you're right. Whittington's first shot is up. Off the front of the rim, no good. Let's see if he can make it more than 10. Second shot. No good nope, rebound. Hickman. Davis is back up. Oh, I'm sorry, it is Davis. I know there is a Hickman. Wait, wait, it is Hickman. <laughs> we got it straight now, folks. And here's Sarah Porter yeah. back the other way. Kobe Williamson in the corner. He drives. Yeah, it was hitting him, my bad. Looks like, <coughs> looks like that is going to be Cody Richards stepping out of bounds, so we've got the ball going the other way. So here's Hernandez bringing the ball up the court now. It looks like we have a turnover on the play. So now the Stingers will have the ball. I believe they're going to be doing, I don't know what kind of defense it is. And there's a loose ball, and it's picked up by Michael Meadows. Meadows, he's trapped in the corner. They get it out to Williamson. Williamson with the three, no good. He's not somebody to play with. And Chestnut, I think, wisely pulls the ball up. Williamson and resets is the a offense. Bit. There's Hickman. And a little there hot. goes one of our CCCA students who catches it. Now, Williamson ain't nobody to play with. He just made that impossible, um, yeah, but unexpected three-pointer earlier in the game. And we got a timeout on the floor, folks. And yep. here in the third period, it is 10 to 7. Mustangs in the lead. Homecoming and Nakina. If you missed it, earlier the girls from Cerro Gordo were victorious over the boys. from Nakina, and in this game it is 10 to 7, Nakina with the lead. So Stingers with the ball. And three minutes and 30, sec 30 seconds left, I believe. And here comes Williamson. And they lost control of the ball. Gets it back. And there is number four, Michael Meadows. He drives baseline, goes under the basket. 
tries to reverse, and he is fouled, so he's going to go to the line. Michael Meadows shooting two for the Stingers. So, he's get ready for the first shot. Shoots, and then it's good. Is now 10 to 8. Can he make the next shot? That's the question. And no good. Smith with the rebound. Whittington down the right sideline. Gets it ahead of Chestnut too deep. Ball goes out of bounds. So that's going to be. It was a good, it was a good plan. We did. Yeah, and that's going to be Stinger ball. Here comes Williamson. Bringing the ball up for the Stingers. And the oh, ball is picked off by, by Hernandez. Hernandez. Hernandez pulls it up, gets it to Chestnut on the left wing. Leaves it for Whittington. Whittington over to Chestnut. Chestnut three. It's and good. It's good. And it's actually it was two. Bailey Chestnut, they call that two? Yeah, they call it two. Okay, so it's Bailey Chestnut with the deep two. Here's a kick back to number 23. Tried to get it inside. And that was Raheem Davis. Ball is knocked out of bounds, and it looks like the Stingers are going to maintain possession. So on the far sideline, that's Michael Meadows looking in down the ball. Gets it over to Elliott. Elliott's going to drive and kick it back to Davis. Davis over to Elliott. Elliott's going to drive lane. Short jumper is no good. Smith with the rebound, and he's going to draw the foul. And Winnington is going to be doing an inbound pass to either Hernandez or Chestnut. Inbound pass to Chestnut, back to Winnington. Gets a screen by Chestnut. No, here's Winnington. He's going to drive baseline. He drives all the way through to Joseph Hickman. Kick, kicks it over to Hickman. Hickman and shot is no good. It, um, he cannot chase it down. Joseph Hickman's pretty good player. And both of these teams have great players. Oh, right, so here's Elliott, left wing. I uh, wouldn't mind saying Hickman play. it back play. to Davis. Davis's shot is no good, but he is fouled. So Raheem Davis is going to the line with a chance to cut this lead to two for the Stingers. So it is 12 to 8 with under three minutes left to go here in the third period. Number 23 for Sarah Gorder. Raheem Davis is shooting. And his first sure. shot is no good. Let's see what he can do next. Can he make it? Second shot. No, no good. good. Smith rebound from the kind of. And, it and is Davis got it back. Intercepted by Davis. And he. 12 footer. It's up. No good rebound. Nakina. Joseph Hickman. Oh, wait. And it's going to be turnover there on yeah. the Mustangs. Was that backcourt? Uh, yeah. It could have been either. I think it was backcourt and it was also double dribble at the same time. So. Yeah. Number five for Seth Gordo. Uh, Dawson Elliott has the ball passed to Raheem Davis. Back to Elliott. With a oh, layup, a drive, and it's good. And it's good. So now it is 12 to 10. Dawson Elliott took the ball in front of the free throw line, drove 12 feet, got the layup, and with the chance to bring the Stingers within one here as we close down the third period. And the first shot, shot. It's, it's good. good. Three point play by Dawson Elliott. Down by one. Hernandez has the ball, passes it back to Whittington. Want man to man coverage. Smith, 15 footer. No good. Number no good. 10. Rebound. Number 10, that's Nathan Ward. He's a big Check that. boy. I'm sorry. That's AJ Shipman. He's a big guy. He pulls it down for the Stingers. There's Evans. He's going to drive. Will not go. Smith with the big rebound and the ball the other way. And there was some miscommunication there. Yep, so turnover by the Mustangs. So the Stingers are coming back. 
number 10 might be a big boy, but the way people think, they might not think big players who play in the basketball. But trust me, number 10 is a good example of big boys playing. Yeah. Absolutely. So here we go. Dawson Elliott bringing the ball up for the Stingers. He gets it over to Davis. Davis wants to go inside. Gives it back to Elliott. Gives over to it to Meadows. Him. Meadows drives. And nice scoop up and in. Michael Meadows gives Number. the Stingers the lead, 13 to 12. Chestnut dribbles to the left wing. Mm-hmm. He's going to be, the, I guess Chestnut's yeah. going to be the key player in this offense. And we've got a three-point violation on the Mustangs. Oh, when I was going to the, uh, get me something to drink earlier, I was saw, I saw the, all the players for Nakana. And I don't know if they can get along really good with number, like, for example, number 41, which is, not, is that McKay, McCoy? Here's Elliot. And Chestnut. Elliot gets the ball back. And he cannot, and that is so hard to do when you when you get the ball on the run like that to put it down on the floor before you take additional steps. I mean, very hard to do. I mean, unless you're like Michael Jordan or something like something yeah. like that, it, then you could do that. But it's going to take I'm a lot sure of practice. I'm sure he had a couple of travels in his oh, time yeah, too. Yes, he did. All right, so here's Chestnut bringing the ball up the court. 30 seconds left. The Stingers are in a 3-2 zone, packed in fairly tight. And Chestnut gets the ball over. No, it's going out of bounds. Yeah, so it's. That's. It is Nakana's ball. Yeah, Nakana ball. So Whittington inbound. He gets the ball into Chestnut. Chestnut back to Whittington. Whittington with the open 20 footer. Will not go. Here's Elliott with the oh. rebound. Ball's and half court. Gets it over to Davis. Davis hey, can he do it? And no, Raheem Davis cannot. But he is fouled on the play, so he's going to go to the line to shoot two. Raheem Davis going to shoot two. Put them in a, let's see. Makes them both. It'll be a three-point lead, and he makes the first. That'll make it a three-point lead, yeah. That's correct. Let's see what the heck can happen here. And no good. Number 33. Seven seconds. No, wait. Nine seconds to the fire. Three seconds left. Chestnut with the three. Almost. So close. So that ends the first three periods of play, folks. 14 to 12. 14 to 12. Stingers are in the lead over the Nakina Mustangs. So, great half or great quarter of basketball there. And you know what time it is now. I, Mr. Gore, I bet he's done this a million times. The 50-50, 50-50 tonight. So, in that quarter, Sarah Gordo was able to make some transition baskets there and the pressure caused some opportunities. So as we go in here into the fourth quarter, I think the, the challenge for both teams is going to be to slow down a little bit, set up the half-court offense, and try to get some good looks at the basket. So we'll definitely be looking for that. And uh, just had a 50-50 drawing, and one of the persons that won it actually gave it back to the school. So... So that's great. So we are out of the break between quarters and we are ready for the final quarter here. Here's your game set. Stingers ahead by two points, 14 to 12. Here are the Mustangs with the ball. Chestnut over on the right wing. Gets it over to Whittington deep in the right corner. And Give and go to Smith and and is good. Ball is slapped away from Smith. 14 all. Into the hands of Cody Richard, who says, thank you very much. I'll take that and scores the easy two points. So here are the Stingers back the other direction. Noah Horton gives Raheem it over Davis. to Davis. Over to Horton. Horton three-pointer is going to be short. Mm, no. Richard with the rebound. Winnington. 
Over to Whittington. Whittington up the right sideline. Oh, he lost it. Oh. He loses the handle on the ball, and it looks like that's going to be Stinger ball. Uh, yep. Raheem Davis is going to be doing inbound pass to anybody right now. And it is 14 all. Stingers number, with the ball. To number five, back, uh, number five to uh, Horton. Backcourt pressure applied by. Oh. That's going to be a foul on the Mustangs. Backcourt pressure applied by. Hernandez. Hernandez and Chestnut. I thought Hernandez was about to get drilled there for a second. So here are the Stingers coming up the court. At Horton. Noah with the ball. Horton brings the ball up. The gives Davis. It over to Davis. To number 15, Williamson. No good. Davis Smith. with the big rebound inside off the missed shot. There's a look ahead to Chestnut. Nice pass. No good. Oh. Will not go. Rebound by Raheem Davis. Raheem Davis looking the other direction. Nice cross court pass to, to Horton. That and Horton I, shot will not go, and we're going to have a jump ball. Horton he should have waited for that shot, in my opinion. He wasn't that close I, enough. Well, I think what happened was he – he committed to it and then realized it wasn't there. Yeah, and just went with it. But, but he he still has his team still has the ball. Raheem Davis has the ball. Here's Elliott, and there's Davis. Shot will not go. Big rebound by Smith. Chestnut, Chestnut in the open court. No, Raheem Davis. No good. Raheem Davis comes up with a rebound saying, no, that's mine. So back off. So, I'm finger you. ball. These boys are aggressive when it comes to this, this sport. They're aggressive when it comes to any sport. And it's a 14-all game, and Kobe Williamson brings the ball up for the Stingers. It's over to Elliott. Elliott drives, kicks it out to Meadows. Meadows drives baseline back to Elliott, back across to Williamson. Williamson drives, pulls up. Raheem over Davis. To Davis. Davis drives baseline, shot is up, will not go, and we've got a foul going the other way. So there's Makina with the ball. And I think somebody's got to break this lead here, Justin. I agree. It, it might go to overtime. It reminds me of the first period with nobody. We actually had a scoreless first period here. All the way till halfway through the second quarter. And then it came, went all downhill from there. <laughs> and it brought us up to 14 all. So here's Chestnut bringing the ball up the court. Give it, it into Smith. Smith. Loose ball. Picked Number. up by Elliott by Stingers. And is he going to do it? No, he won't. And But he is fouled on the play. So Dylan Dawson Elliott will go to the line with a chance to put the Stingers in the lead. Yep. Will he make it is the question. And we got a timeout taken by Sarah Gordo. So it is now four minutes and three seconds left in the fourth quarter. The score is 14 all. Both teams are in the huddle. I think they've got their so they got a game plan coming on. And when they, they come out of the huddle, it will be going to the free throw line. Where I believe number five, the Dawson Elliott will be going shooting for a two, I believe. Yeah, so two free throws coming up for the Stingers. And now we're just waiting on the Mustangs to finish up. And here we go. So four minutes left to go here in the game. Impressive it's game All so tied far. up, absolutely. It's been a very tight game, and once again, we had a scoreless first period and yeah, great defense like on both sides. We had a scoreless first period, yeah, but it ended that halfway through the second quarter. So basically, you're talking about, let's see. Almost 10 minutes of basketball with no score. Eight. And again, not because of poor offense. That's 12 really minutes right there. No, wait, there's six quarters, six minutes in each quarter, right? Yep, so here we go with Dawson Elliott's first shot. Trying to break the tie. First shot? No A good. A little short. So 
So here's Dawson Elliott to the line for a second shot, looking to break the 14 all tie. Shot is up. No. And it is in and out, rebounded by the Stingers. And Davis goes back up and he gets fouled. So the Stingers are going to have two more opportunities to break this tie here. Uh, every time I'm looking at Nakana, I'm about I'm close to saying South Columbus because that's their uniforms, the South Columbus's uniform look almost the same. They do. And Davis's first shot is no good. So he's got one more chance to break the, tip, the tie right now. Can he do it? Shot is up. And no, no good. good. Number 33 for Nakana. With the rebound. Well. Here's Whittington. He's open court. He's going to drive, and he's going to make an easy layup. And that is now 16 to 14. In Cody the Richard with a nice outlet quarter. pass to Whittington, who puts the Stingers up. Check that. Puts the Mustangs up by two. And he's, he's double covered right there. And looks like we have a timeout called by the Stingers. He couldn't do nothing there. He was co he being was covered by Chestnut uh, and, and Whittington. And what what players are typically taught to do is not to cross half court unless they're sure they're not going to get trapped because once you cross half court, you can't go back. That's true. Call that the coffin corner. That's why I say you wait for the perfect moment to execute. Don't execute all the way. Just wait for the right moment and then execute it. And Don't, I'm just saying, because you're going to get yourself caught, messed up, or something. And the officials are actually playing catch with the crowd. Well, actually, that is a cheerleader, I think. <laughs> I can't tell. So, here's your game set. 16 to 14, with yeah. Nakina in the lead. Three minutes and 33 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Stingers have the ball. And here comes Hunter Tiffany now in the game for the Stingers. Over to Elliott. And Elliott he tries to it. drive and he lost the ball, got it back. And didn't make it. And he shoots the 10 footer. And he gets to shoot for two. And he gets fouled in. So here is Dawson Elliott with a chance to go back on the line to tie the game for the Stingers. Again. I feel like we've done nothing but free throws this period. I feel like it, except for that amazing three pointer earlier by. I believe it was Horton. When after the um, Sarah Gordon Stingers got that first two points. Nice. Let's, see, let's see if they can make it. First, first shot is no, no good. good. Let's see if he gets from this shot. He gets everything from that shot. So 16 to 15 now. Stingers quickly in a man-to-man -man full court press. And here's Hickman bringing the ball up, gives it over to Whittington. And he lost it by, and Raheem Davis picks it up. That's and good. he lays it up. Raheem Davis gives the Stingers the lead. And here's Chestnut back the other way to a wide open. Actually, that was a Chestnut. That was number 33. It was a wide open uh, Michael Meadows. I'm sorry. No, that's uh, it's a wide open pin Jamie Harrelson. I believe that was Harrelson. Yeah. No, 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 no 33 had that one. So that was uh, Nathan, 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 Nathan Nathaniel Panetta. And so we have a foul on the Mustangs, and that's going to send Cody Richard to the line. And we have three minutes and I believe eight seconds left. Let's see how Fierce is going to get. Richards wearing the one and one. His shot is no good. Big rebound in there by Smith. Here's Whittington back the other way. Mustangs with the ball and trailing by one. No good. Oh, we got a turnover there on the Mustangs. So who knows? Here are the Stingers back with the ball. Full court press now. Raheem Davis has the ball. Davis breaks the press pretty easily. He's across half court. Gets uh -huh. it ahead to Tiffany. Tiffany near the left wing. To Meadows. Hands and it's good. Hands it to Michael Meadows. For who makes the layup. That gives the Stingers a three-point lead. 
Loose ball. Hickman has Hold it. By Hickman, Hickman three. No, no good. good. Panetta, Panetta's Panetta. shot is no good, but he's going to go to the line to shoot two. So Nathaniel Panetta on the line, trying to cut this lead by the Singers, three-point lead by one or possibly two. And referee's talking to one of the players. Yeah, we've got a substitution taking place. Two of them. And in a switch. Uh, exchange in spots for so Stingers, third order. Stingers in the lead by three. Can he... Oh, the first one. Panetta's first shot is good. Cuts the lead to 19-17, Stingers. Now let's see if he can make the next one. One more shot coming up. And it's in no and good. Out. Loose ball, rebound. Cerro Gordo, here we go the oh, other way. Davis has it. Yep. Davis across half court. Norton has it to Williamson. Williamson on the right wing. Two it over to, to Meadows. Meadows to Elliott, and mm. Elliott gets two. So now it is 21 to 17, I believe. Higman with the ball across half court. He's going to drive, take it all and the way, and he's going to be fouled. No good. He's going to go to the line to shoot two. Which will give him 19, and he's got two minutes and 27 seconds left. Yeah, it's real important now that uh, we're closing in on the last couple of minutes of the game that both teams take full advantage of any opportunities at the free throw line or on offense. First shot, Hickman is no good. Mm. That's, mm. can't even say nothing about that shot. It's happened to me before. And it's good for the next one. Right, so that. That makes it a one possession game now. Mustangs trailing the Stingers 21 to 18 with a little over two minutes left to go here in about the entire game, fourth period here. Two minutes, 27 seconds left, I believe. Let's see, and, let's see how, what they're gonna come up with now. And I don't think anybody's left. The gym looks almost as full as it was when well, the game began, and I'm, I'm estimating probably around 300, so 350. Maybe. So. I think some left, all right, the ones that usually sat in front of us. Good crowd. I believe the homecoming queen is still here. And we had a good interview with her in between games. Mm-hmm. And I got to sit down and talk with the sixth and seventh grade pr uh, princes and princesses. Okay, here we go. Inbound full court press by Nakina. And here's Sarah Gordo breaking it pretty easily. Oh, broke two ankles. And <laughs> shot by Meadows will not go. Rebound by Hickman of the Mustangs. And he's I'm, going to give it to Whittington. I'm impressed with what I just saw just a few minutes, sec months, seconds ago. And here's Whittington. He's going to drive, take it up. It's good. 21 to 19, Whittington drives. Can they? Nice drive by Whittington. Can Sarah Gore do what they just did again by breaking two ankles at the same time? I mean, <laughs> they broke Hickman's ankles and Chestnut's ankles. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that spot of the floor must be pretty slick. I don't know. I mean, they. I want to know I see Hickman I, and Chestnut I think they're on the giving floor. It, giving it a little bit of attention right now. But it's um, that was a pretty good play. Yeah, it was, and and on that play, Whittington took the ball right before half court and was determined to drive the lane. Got a nice look, got himself under control, and made the layup. So and he all he needs is another two pointer or three pointer, and they'll be in the lead because it's a one point lead as of right now. So here are the Mustangs back in the man to man full court press. Stingers are trying to inbound the ball against it. They're clinging to a one-point lead, and the ball gets into Elliott, and Elliott is going to dribble across half court. He's going to swing it back to Horton. To Horton, and they've got a hustle. 
And Hickman to by Hickman. Ball. And Chestnut has it. Chestnut has the ball and we have a travel going back the other direction. So Hort will be doing the inbound pass. And the time, ladies and gentlemen, is one minute and 40 seconds left. So there's Elliott over to Meadows, back to Horton, deep in their own backcourt. And, and pass is, is out, of bounds. out of bounds. So that means it's possession for Nakana. So here are the Mustangs with a chance to take the lead. And now the Stingers are in a full court press. Here's Hickman, he gets loose, he's across half court. He's gonna drive the lane, shot is up. It's no yeah, good, gets his own rebound. rebounds. It. And no good. Will not go, but Hickman for the Mustangs are, will go to the line with a chance to tie or put the Mustangs in the lead. Can he do it? Can he tie this and make it go to overtime? Or can he make it go past overtime? He's, He's made the first good. one. We have a tie ball game. Can and he make we the have next a timeout one? stingers. This is gonna be an exciting finish, Justin. You tell me, I'm already wanting to jump out of the seat if I I'm can. It must have been an exciting um, second half because you got those nachos at halftime. Oh, you haven't yes. eaten hardly any of them. If it, no, this is my second bowl. Believe it or not, the cheese they, okay. the cheese they make it with is really amazing. <laughs> I'll talk to Mr. Gore and see if I can get him to arrange maybe a doggy bag or something. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good idea. So Ace them on the way home. So with a minute 20 left to go, it is 21 all here. The Nakina Mustangs and Cerro Gordo Stingers all tied up. Homecoming tonight at Nakina had some festivities. Got to speak to our King. brand new homecoming queen. queen. I got to speak with the, her and, king too. And we got to speak to also uh, Mr. Gore and Miss Rachel Smith, lead teacher. So we've had, had a good night here as we wait for Joseph Hickman's second shot to possibly give the Mustangs the lead. This. Oh! And here's Elliot with the ball going the other direction. Can it looks like he's going to press the issue. Baseline jumper no is good. no good, but he's going to go to the line to shoot too. So we got a tie game with Dawson Elliott on the line with a chance. A minute and 11 seconds left. To put the Stingers in the lead. 21 all in the fourth quarter. No good. And the toughest shot in the world to make at this stage of the game at the free throw line. With the team on your back, the stress and how much you want to make this shot just to put your team in the lead so you can win this game. You got a million things going through your mind right now. You don't know what to think. Second shot. Yep. No good. No good. What kind of rebound? And There's now Panetta. Got gets it back to Whittington. He's down the right sideline again. Is it Smith? Smith shot. It's good. Oh, good. Hugh Smith gives the Mustangs the lead. And now here's Davis back the other direction, coast to coast. And he is fouled. Mm -hmm. So Hugh Smith catches the ball at the free throw line, takes a dribble, turns around, and nails a 13-footer for the Mustangs. And that was amazing. Raheem Davis, can he do it? First shot is no good. We have a timeout. Mustangs. All the suspense will get to you. And coaches really taking their time here, making sure that players know, have what we call situational awareness. Yes. So they know what to do if the basket is made, what to do if the basket is not made what to do if the basket is not made 
and the other team gets a rebound. So I definitely commend the coaches for taking their time and using their timeouts wisely here. Yes, that's a smart thing to do, very smart thing to do. Everybody's on their feet. Davis' second shot is up. And it's, it's no good. good. Rebound to Kina. Here's Whittington. Can he do what he Down did the sideline? And we're gonna have a foul on looks like Davis. So the question is now Can Whittington do what he did earlier? And I do not think we're in the one and one. Okay, so that means for the next three fouls, McKinnon will get a chance to go to the free throw line to shoot one and one. What that means is you've got to make it. You've got to make it. And you've got to make rebounds. You've got to try to make an offensive rebound if you don't. For the Stingers, very important for them to block out. Well, good, defensive rebound. You've got Elliott against Smith down there. And the first foul is good. It is now 24-21, 53.1 seconds left in the fourth, this fourth quarter. Can Winnington do it again? It's a question. It's going to get everybody's on their feet. It's good. Four-point lead for the Mustangs. 25-21. Here's 50 Davis. seconds left. Here's Davis. He's going to drive lane. Up, oh. will not go. Whittington with the rebound. He's go Whittington's going. And, and Whittington gets chestnut. the chestnut. Chestnut Whittington. to Whittington. Whittington drives baseline. And he makes it. <laughs> Raheem Davis has the ball. Jarrett Whittington has taken And Hernandez control. got a hand on that one. Jarrett Whittington has scored and put Put the Mustangs in a four point, check that six point possession. Can I don't know if they can do that. And it, well, I think what they're gonna have to do is score quick if you're the Stingers and then you have to foul. And 25.2 seconds left. You gotta you score and a foul. miracle. There's Williamson, he wants to shoot three, drives baseline, kicks it out to Elliott. Elliott will not go. And Meadows is gonna have the rebound and he's gonna be fouled. So, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, that was Panetta. 14 seconds left exactly. Panetta for the Mustangs. Gets the Goes shoot. to the line and shoots one and one. So After what happened. Can he do it? He, the, the uh, uh, I said Cyclones, but on the kind of coach, telling Whittington and Chestnut to stay in the back. He makes it. That gives and the Mustangs a seven point lead and at this point that's a three possession game even with three pointers and that's um, that's a tall order for the Stingers. I agree with what uh, the coach is doing right now. Keeping Winnington and number four Jamie Harrelson in the back. Keep him, oh, never mind. Oh, never mind. It's now number 40, Griffin, Hannah, and Jamie Harris in the back. Two of the smallest players on the team. So, Panetta. Can he do it? And no good. Elliott with the rebound. Stingers need to get down the court quick and shoot a three. Here's there Williamson is. in the corner. Somebody it, got on top of him too quick, and there's there Elliott. Raheem Davis. Back to Davis. Davis with the three. No good. And that's the ball game, folks. It the is now Mustang 28 to 21. The Nakana Mustangs dominated this game. We'd like to congratulate the Stingers from Cerro Gordo for winning the girls' game and the Mustangs from Nakana winning the boys' game on homecoming. 
And Justin, we had a great time here. Yes, we did. A very good time. And we're going to be posting this game at WZCO.org, so you can check it out there if you're listening to us or you're viewing it on the Internet. Check it out there, and you get to relive all these great moments. I'd also like to thank Mr. Aaron Yates and all the students from CCCA, and especially Mr. Rod Likens, who um, organized everything. Getting all the students down here an hour away on an activity bus is not an easy thing to do. So thank you to him mm -hmm. for making this possible tonight. So we'll sign off here for now. Your final score of the boys' game is 28 Nakina, Cerro Gordo 21. And hope you have a great night. We're going to return you on the radio in just a moment to our normal programming, and we will catch up with you again as we enter the uh, conference tournaments for varsity basketball. So hope you'll check us out. Once again, I'm Kelly Jones for WZCO 89.9 FM. Signing off, and we'll return you to our regularly regular programming here in just a moment. Have a great night. <laughs>